probably we get like a mark by Simon. You'll so break it, man. Don't break it. <laughs> oh no, it was a bad idea. <laughs> Inviting Carlos here. <laughs> so, welcome. The live stream starts. Um, the Masters of Stone 2019 here in the E4 bowling gym. Um, invitational competition. Bavaria. It's beautiful. So many people already here. We have 15 minutes to go uh, till it starts. Uh, it's a great, great charity co um, competition. So um, everything is uh, in combination with CAC. Most people probably know. It's uh, Climbers Against Cancer. Um, they focus on research in or against cancer. And um, yeah, I'm super happy that I have my friends here. Um, Kuba is today moderating. Uh, Hello. Yeah. So he's like for the quality. From, uh, from Poland, <laughs> if I say something really silly, please don't be too hard on me. I'm speaking a second language here. But we're doing it our best in like that, covering this, uh, <laughs> this event in English for, for all the international audience that we might attract tonight. So hello, everyone. And here in the Happy middle, here. the one and only Carlos Katari. Yeah, this playing <laughs> one is of the route bicep. setters here. Um, so we have them in the beginning here uh, to maybe answer two or three questions. Um, maybe Kuba, you, do you want to introduce um, our audience what is happening today? Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Let's start from that. Uh, so probably many of you are kind of familiar with um, this format of invitational competitions. It's a little bit different to how we normally have climbing comps done. So uh, there is no qualifying round and obviously there is no semi-final round. Um, it's a form of a final to so all the competitors that are in here today, so six ladies and six gentlemen will be only attempt attempting um, to climb four problems. They will have four minutes to do that. Um, but what's kind of unique this time is that these guys were sessioning the problems for two hours before the competition, actually together with the root setters, who were still introducing the last tweaks and changes to, to the difficulties of the problems, so that they would be top matching the level of the athletes for the show. Um, and I think it's uh, it's a very interesting idea to have it to have it done this way, because it's always a lottery with with picking the difficulty of the problem. So it's a good show, and it's not too hard and it's not too easy. And so I think it's also nice, like f because um, we can raise the difficulty one more time. You know, it's um, because the athletes had time before. Uh, to test the boulders, uh, to get into the movements uh, without pressure. Yes, it's, um, it's a lovely way of avoiding a complete failure from the root setter's perspective. Yeah, but it's also that the boulders <laughs> are like, <laughs> that they, they are way, way harder. They uh, are way harder. Yes, this is not uh, a usual level of a boulder set for a World Cup or a big international competition. Because these guys, like I said, they had two hours to session them. They are way, way, way harder. Um, so you'll see for yourself how they go. Um. So step by step. Um, step by step. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get so many informations. It's uh, such a such a big competition. So much is going on here. Like before, we've seen um, um, so many people working in the organization. Um, but uh, yeah, main job was um, the route setting. Um, I would say, and this is why we have Carlos here. Carlos, can you explain for, for, for people, uh, most people don't know how, how, a, s how a competition uh, is set actually. Um, how did it work? Did you have a plan directly or um, did you just start with something? Uh, hello, uh, thank you for <laughs> inviting me. For me. It's a pleasure to be here. You're very welcome, buddy. Okay, what does it mean that I have to put my... Okay, can I speak in Spanish? No. <laughs> no, let's try in English, okay. please. You are a uh, little bit nervous. Don't worry. Don't I worry. think we all are a bit nervous, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apart from you, I mean, you're chill, yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. You, you, you don't worry. 
The planning for setting uh, was Dirk. Dirk do a really good planning. Yeah, Dirk is the Dirk Ulig is the chief setter of um, E4. Yes, and yes, the yes. mastermind behind all yeah, this chaos. Yeah, yeah. He's he, the man. He is a real, uh, real crazy man, but it's really fun uh, work with him. It's really, really, really good. Really good. But it's not about Dirk. It's about you, man. How did you enjoy setting for this competition? Perfect. I enjoy yes. a lot. Look at this. I don't know if you can see my my finger. No skin. Carlos is showing <laughs> pink patches on his fingertips, which means he wasn't trying hard enough because he's not bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, yes. We have a planning, and the plan is uh, make a real good show for the people because this is an official competition. You know, this is a real party. I mean, and we make uh, we boil a different style of boulders. Okay. Yes. Uh, spectacular, like the parkour and a strong finger, a strong power, and... So it's a whole package, it will yes. test all of the climbing abilities. Yeah, I think the, mm. the, the real thing, the one competition is find the real complete climber, you know? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Who can climb a slab and who can pull hard from a crimp. Yes, perfect. perfect. Excellent. Say, yes, sir. This boulder, I said this boulder, the orange and green, because I love it. And. <laughs> and the, the Did you set it by yourself, or was it plenty of teamwork involved? No, in I set uh, two boulders by myself. Okay. But uh, we tested together. Absolutely. Okay. And okay. when we tested together, we do a many change, a many things, and. And would you say the uh, the final result is very different from uh, the initial idea that you had with the boulders? Only in one. Only in one. Only in okay, one. so once they remained pretty close to the original yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we changed a lot uh, um, in the end. The, the first move was the same, but the last, uh, okay. the last three moves we changed a lot because it was too easy. I, I see, okay. Because in the beginning we, we, we searched a quick boulder, but, okay. but we, we saw that the uh, competitors were, are really, really, really strong. And we the field is immensely strong tonight. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and we, say we will introduce all the athletes in a second, but there are some big names here tonight. Yes, both big, really big names. Among female and among men. Mm. Was a really challenge to set this boulder. Absolutely, yeah. 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 It's a good thing that you uh, had the chance to see them move on these boulders, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And late uh, after the workout session, yes. because the athletes have two, uh, two hours for testing the bullet, we saw the movement, we saw the, the face, all, the, all of this. And we decided to do s some change, mm -hmm. but a small one. You understand? Okay, so the changes were very small. Yeah, I mean, but you have um, seven setters here tonight? Well, I mean, seven setters were part of the setting team for this event? Actually, in the beginning... Or even more? N nine. So nine. It was nine. originally intended for nine root nine, setters, nine. out but of which more than half are probably experienced in setting World Cups. Yeah, so yeah we missed to Lauren, Lauren Laporte. He yes. He can come. But I, I want to, uh, to put something in between. We have got plenty like, uh, more information to squeeze into this yes, um, little time I mean slot. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean the route setting <laughs> and um, everything is like a big theme. So we can talk yeah, hours for us about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, super interesting. Um, super important to mention is like um, that you have the chance today to um, put donations for CIC um, because it's a charity competition. And um, actually, we have a homepage uh, running, and this is boulderhalle minus e4.de. Um, on that um, homepage, you actually, you can see it in the display um, in the screen. Uh, you will directly be linked um, to, to like an easy, easy possible possibility for 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 making donations to CAC. Um, we have a big goal today. There's like 10,000 euros um, that we want to, to, to fund for, for Climbers Against Cancer today. So that is the, the main goal. That's why we should mention it now. In case you were wondering what uh, can Climbers Against Cancer are doing, they're actually financially supporting organizations that are running research, scientific research to fight cancer. So not only you have the opportunity to contribute yourself to the world of science, 
but also you have the opportunity of writing your own message at a little little um, side of our screen that's being displayed. Yes, and as you have seen, um, if you make a donation, you will find your name on the list. You can put like some extra um, uh, text to it, so maybe you have a message everyone should 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 read. Um, you have the uh, the possibility to do that, even like if it's just five or ten euros. Um, every euro helps. Every little penny counts. Go That's on, guys. The thing. Come on. So, and as we can see. Um, Reini and uh, Klipsig, they're heating the crowd up. So it's uh, many, many people here. Like, I don't know if everyone actually found a space. Uh, absolutely packed this gym. Um, yeah, super nice gym. Um, I can't mention it often enough. Um, it's one of the main sponsors, of course, today. Uh, together with X and uh, Boulder's Kletain service, who's doing like the whole... Uh, distribution for climbing holds um, you can check their website and as you have seen before Cliff Bar will uh, donate 2,500 euros as well all right so guys, we as have you can a see list of competitors that just came up on the screen here yeah? uh, among women Mona Kellner lady from here she's a local climber she actually runs the birthday parties for kids in this gym but not only that she's a she's a super ferocious competition climber and she's going to be fighting against Alma Bestwater coming from Germany, Jessica Piltz, Afra Herni, Jenja Kazbekova an absolute legend in the climbing community, Melissa Lenev. Uh, among men we have Gabri Moroni, Philip Martin, Jörg Verhoeven, Alex Kazanov from Israel, Alex Megos, a guy from Franken Europe, many of you probably know this dude, and special guest from Japan, Sukuru Hori. Yeah, um, I, I, I just heard that um, uh, we have to say uh, bye to Carlos because he wants to see the competition himself. He wants to see what he actually Mama. said. Yeah, totally makes sense. Um noch ein bisschen Druck aufzubauen, werden wir den Live-Stand der Spenden immer wieder mal durchgehen. Also wenn es nicht 10.000 Euro erreicht heute Abend, dann äh, müssen wir noch was spenden. Ja, yeah, you're good to go, man. You, you can. <laughs> thank you very much, yeah. Yes, bye-bye. Thank bye. you. <laughs> See we you could, later. We could uh, chat away about route setting for a few more hours, but we have a competition to cover. <laughs> Nice one, dude. So, uh, I come Barbie. over. Yeah, come on, man. Uh, how many? Yeah, three minutes to go, basically. Yeah. Two guys on the live mics doing their thing. With two guys on the dead mics doing our thing. <laughs> Just, um, yeah, internet, you know. Yeah, today was uh, already really, really interesting to see the, the athletes performing on those boulders here. Um, as Carlos already said, it's like a, a real mixture, but I think it's like it's, it's really show boulders, uh, a yeah, lot of coordination. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have plenty of root setters who are really into the, this style of, I wouldn't just call it new school. I think these guys, what they're really passionate about is exploring and developing new possibilities for movement in climbing. So they, they try to come up with something new where you think that oh, everything's been already done they try to still come up with new um, new things on the wall. Uh, what I think it's also worth mentioning is how they will be scoring points today. Yeah, because uh, the, the, the boulders actually have three bonuses instead of just one, as is normally the case in, in the competitions. Uh, the first zone is awarded five points, the second 10, and the third 15 points. Top equals scoring 25 points. However, for every failed attempt, the competitor loses 0.1 point. 0.1 point, yeah? Yeah, so, so we make an example, like that Let's it's maybe may, may yep. more transparent. For example, like if, uh, if a climber reaches... Um, Top in the first go, they get 25 points. Exactly. But, but, but if they do it second go, they get 24.9 points because they lo lost one attempt. Exactly. On the way to the top. And I think the rest will become pretty transparent uh, during the competition. Yeah, you will get used to it. Um. Yeah. 
yeah, really, really interesting. I, those boulders, um, I was testing them as well yesterday, mm -hmm. um, so I had a look. Uh, yeah, really, really crazy. Um, what we have to say is like maybe they are not like 8C boulders or anything. This is not needed. It's really complex, you know. It's like they have a big chance of failure every try. So complexity and high risk. Yes, exactly. Uh, it will be will be really difficult. Every climber has four minutes now to solve the problem. Um, so how many attempts he's using um, is a decision by the climber. Um, but four minutes flat. Four uh, minutes flat. Exactly. Yep. Uh, yeah, that will be uh, quite a toughie. Um, really, really, uh, a lot of moves are really balancey and like you make a small mistake or you're a little bit nervous. I um, am really curious, how is the mind state of the athletes who are normally used to, to flashing boulders that they see in, in big competitions? They step out of the isolation zone. Oh, and they, totally they see a boulder now, yeah. for the first time. And obviously that's something that's that's kind of affecting your, your mental game, yeah? Because you have to stay very focused and the first go is most most important. And here, on the one hand, they had the, the chance to learn the movement, but on the other, there is a possibility there is more pressure mounting on them because, for example, if they have actually climbed the boulder, start to the top during the practice round, but what's going to happen now? It, when they stand in front of the boulder, are they going to feel more stressed? Or I'm just really curious what's going on in the yeah, I think in this unusual It's like format. a new game, you know. Yeah. Um, also, uh, when they were testing the boulders already, um, they've seen the other climbers uh, uh, performing in this boulder as well. So, um, which is again unusual. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, it can create even more pressure. Maybe you have seen another competitor doing really really well in this boulder yeah. and you know oh, it feels really really bad for yeah. yourself and you want to kick their ass or that kicks your ass because you feel like oh i'm not feeling this great today and this guy is so strong la, 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 you know yeah it was also really but uh, professional athletes i mean come on they have to have like super strong minds yeah but it's, it's also different um every every athlete was uh, was behaving a little bit different Some, we're doing it by itself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he watched the Masters of Stone. So have I started 1900, I don't know, 92, on VHS. VHS! 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 The Masters of Stone 1 with Peter Croft, Juji Hirayama and the other. And then there were five other legendary Kletter films. That was immer so the Mucke, so a bit like Judas Priest on uh, speed. So Ja, so ein bisschen Metal, ja, Matthias, irgendwie ja. geil und Stimmung, krasse ja, Kletteraktion. Es lohnt sich auf jeden Fall. Die gibt es noch auf YouTube. Wer sie nicht kennt, sich die anzugucken. Da gab es die Rock Warriors. Das war so der Vorläufer vom Deepwater Soloing. So ein paar Wahnsinnige, die oberhalb von so einem See sich gegenseitig aus der Wand gezogen haben. Sehr sehenswerte Filme. Ja, yeah, back in the days of Masters of Stone, there were no good close-ups on the holes. I mean, <laughs> the quality of footage was just crazy but it's still it was so inspiring wasn't it i mean Bobby, which when did you start climbing which, which year did you start oh, climbing I in yeah in really the 90s really late. or early no no 2002, 2002 actually yeah. yeah i think i was 2001 started and any kind of footage that we could get back then i mean you would see a piece of rock with a bit of chalk on it and that became like an inspiration for ages Definitely. Because you didn't have Instagram, you didn't have YouTube no, to like no, follow nothing. exact beta on how to send the problem in the gym because it's registered in some kind of app. Yeah, uh, that's that's a story, like the history to that sport, no? When yeah, and it's like the foundation, like the history of of um, or, or climbing media yeah. and develop of development of climbing media is, I think, a, an important part in this event today as well, isn't it? I mean, we've yeah, got I think this is also why why this name is picked actually. You yeah, know, Masters of Stone should should. Um, should bring that uh, this is development yeah, maybe like a little bit in front I don't know is and uh, Yuji Hirayama is, is he about um, he, he was around here um, I mean this competition in the E4 today is directly uh, next to uh, to a trade show um, the last days um, like everyone in holes and walls is all about climbing at this trade show yeah there is a big trade show in Friedrichshafen, summertime, I guess, isn't it? Uh, actually, it was outdoors. there. No, it moved to, to Munich uh, last year. Or it moved to Munich. It's, and it doesn't really matter. And this one in Nuremberg here is called Holes and Walls, and it's just climbing holes, climbing shoes, 
walls. <laughs> and imagine walls as well, yeah. Yeah, so so many people um, from all over Europe came for this event, for the trade show here to Nuremberg. And that's also a reason why we have so s such a crazy starting list today here. Um, as the setters, uh, of course, all the setters were invited here for Perhaps the trade show as well. Perhaps it's a good opportunity to introduce the setters a little bit. Fabi, you have prepared a little list of the guys that contributed that time. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, as you have seen before, Carlos uh, Qatari uh, were one of the main setters. Carlos is from Venezuela, isn't he? Yes. I, I mean, he's living in Spain, but mm -hmm. um, I think his roots are from Venezuela. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, um, and he mentioned Dirk already, the owner and uh, chief setter. One of the owners and one exactly of, yeah, the of the mastermind. four. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy four mastermind. Craziness. Um, yeah, and uh, Martin Ramirez, of course. Uh, he's from Leipzig. Um, Originally from Venezuela as well, isn't he? Uh, isn't he, yeah? I think he is. I mean, they all speak German, these guys here. Uh, all right, first competitor in the stage. It's Mona Kellner, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, she's from Nuremberg the here. The birthday girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, she's she's full on serious competitor. Sorry, it's just. Yeah, she. I um, think she she won all those regional uh, Nuremberg yeah, championships. Yeah, she's the strongest regional girl. And it's really nice to see uh, someone here from the area. Um, Absolutely. Not the case um, with this guy here, Gabri Moroni. Yeah, from uh, Italy. Yeah, he's from Italy. Won a World Cup last year. Yeah, but he's also a really, but really strong outdoor climber. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he won a World Cup last year is just like a, a small excerpt from his uh, climbing career. He's been, he actually started climbing earlier than this girl was born. <laughs> this is Alma Bestvater. She was born in 1996, and I think Gabri Moroni was already a climber then. Yeah. Alma Bestvater. Yeah, um, Alma, like massively maybe... Massively accomplished German Yeah, maybe, climber. maybe the most successful German... Uh, uh, climber uh, at the moment since you love warm, yeah, yeah, on the female side, yeah, in competitions, uh, yeah, really, really focused on the point today. Who we got now? Philip Martin, isn't it? Yes, he's from Algoy area, South German dude. Yeah, super strong. Strong I've as seen hell him today. Yeah, probably uh, not as impressive list of um, competition wins or, the, or experiences as Gabby Moroni, but. I mean, he was cranking hard earlier today. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Jessica Pills. We we've seen him climbing now. today, and um, he had, had a really good feeling, and um, uh, it was. And he was feeling confident in that. Yeah, maybe he, he has it doesn't have so high expectations, and um, which maybe usually affects your performance in a positive way. Yeah, yeah it? possible. Yeah, Jessica Pills, guys, this lady is a world champion. 2018, she won. She won in Innsbruck. Yeah. Elite. World Championships. And she's uh, one of two um, climbers here who, who hold already Tokyo have the 2020 ticket. tickets. Yes. Dope. Jörg Verhoeven. Legend. <laughs> yeah, legend. Another legend. I mean, it's, it's just a pack of legend, isn't it? Yeah, like crazy strong boulder. Well, he's uh, not, but the thing with Jörg is not just a boulder. He's, exactly, he that's what I wanted to say. Yeah? Yeah, he like was climbing the nose. <laughs> competitions to multi pitch on granite. Very, very. Um, Good guest to have here tonight. Afra Hönig, representing Munich. Yeah, yeah super I mean, strong this year. they're all super strong. No, they all fit perfectly here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it's very interesting because we have like true legends, um, characters that have been about the stage for 10 to 15 years, and we have young competitors. Such as Alex Kazanov, yeah, so um, winner of a World Cup last season as well. Yeah, and uh, winner, um, winner of this competition of the Masters of Stone last year. Yeah, and he took the victory last year at this competition. It was named E4 Legends last year, but yeah, he took the win. Yeah, and it was a really impressive show. Like, that wasn't, wasn't, wasn't close, like he knew exactly what yeah, he was absolutely. doing there. Yenya Kazbekova from Ukraine. Fifth out of six competitors. Yeah, had a crazy, crazy season. 
Uh, she developed like in every competition nearly. Super active on the competition scene, yeah. right? Been yeah. probably to most of them. Lead, Boulder, still a good climber outside. She she, she red pointed an 8C plus route. Yeah, and especially uh, when it was on slab uh, boulders. Uh, she could uh, she could bring one or, or two more tops uh, mm. in, in semi-finals uh, and secured a, a super good ranking in the in the uh, Boulder World Cup last year. Alex Megos. I mean, what can we say about Alex Megos? Uh, he, he's just one of those too locals much, here. Too much to really begin. And he's local as well, yeah. yeah. He was born in the city, what, 30 minutes drive yeah, from also here, training here. From Erlangen. And he obviously comes here a lot. All right, <laughs> Melissa Lenev. Um, if there's some French people listening to us, I'm sure I've made a mistake with pronouncing Melissa's last name. Sorry for that, but French is really hard language. Yeah, I think there's like <laughs> an accent grave. <laughs> most most like likely there is something I got wrong. Lenev. Yeah. Um, Melissa is, yeah, incredibly dedicated climber. She she does sport climbing. She does hardcore bouldering. Um, for many, many years. She started pursuing uh, a career in route setting lately. So I think she she does, yeah. One competition she takes part in, and another she sets with all the hardcore guys, and, and then she goes to start in another one. All right, last competitor among male, Sukuru Hori from Japan. Yeah, like he definitely had the the longest distance to travel to come to that competition Absolutely, here. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, just a quick anecdote about Sukuru. I was chatting to uh, Tomasz Oleksy, one of the World Cup setters, and he was setting Adidas Rockstars in Stuttgart last year. And he said he was very happy to have Tsukuro on the team because he was able to test basically everything. And he was the guy that just, from the root setters, he, uh, make he made the competition happen with his unrelentless force and determination. Yeah, as we can see now, like we come to the first boulder, um, uh, we have really, really uh, balancey boulders, uh, especially for the men, um, where you can't actually really hold onto holds. Um, no, it's never. all about the feet, and especially Tsuko looked really, really solid in this type of climbing. Um, no, it was really impressive. Um, I'm super, super keen to see if uh, he can transfer it. Um, today into the competition it's a totally different story mm. than in checking it out uh, like you have to bring it on the point in four minutes um, yeah I mean all professionals but yeah it's uh, really really interesting to see who performs best in four minutes so we have a little bit of a funny order of the boulders right because the boulder that's furthest on the right hand side is women's number two isn't it Furthest on the right hand side, no. Furthest to the right is, is I think it's a it's a two, isn't it? Oh, possible. But it, as we can see the men like this is what I was talking about, this black boulder. Uh, super balancey slab, um, no in cut hold, every hold is terrible here. Yeah, uh, forget about in cut holds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, squadra um, holds the black one we've um, seen. Yeah, Squadra holds, cheetah volumes, probably some So this will be the first boulder for the men and here in the back we can see the first boulder for the women. It's um, the orange and green uh, Very volumes. Very interesting lapis volumes, shapes. And the men said the um, the problem number one is relatively tough but it all comes down to one sequence mostly. Uh, but yeah, I think hard to it's, say. it's very low percentage. Yeah, also the beginning. Um, you can you can mess it up. Um, I don't know how it is with the spots now. Yeah. Uh, the light on the wall always makes uh, small differences and a small difference uh, in this difficulty can change everything. At this level of everything. climbing, minute difference can change everything. I, I would even, they're saying that the number of people that gathered in the competition wall have increased the humidity to the point that the slopers might be hard, harder to hold. No, seriously, like yeah, with, sure. with this level of climbing, I can imagine that happening. Um, this when is it women comes to two. women's boulder number one, um, they were having hard time with it during the testing round, or at least some parts of it. So, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it looks corner. like big volumes, uh, but at the very end, it's more about edge uh, edges. Yeah, uh, they're big shapes on the wall, but there is very little you can. Yeah, hold they are all to. covered, so at the very end you have like a really long edge as a hold. Um, yeah. And everything is sideways facing, so makes it balancey and powerful at the same time. So. All right. Gabri's so on the wall. Yes. And so is Mona. So Gabi has like a interesting, different method for the first move. Yes, the competitors actually uh, figured out a way of cheating. I mean, what's cheating? I mean, it's just a variation. It's still low percentage and it's still high risk. Yeah, sorry, cheating is not the right word. They just found a different way. I think like the route setters had it in mind as well. Um, and um, But it's all, all about right. the difficulty there. You can have different ways. Check this out, to the Mona, top. Yes. the birthday nice. girl, yeah. just <laughs> sent it. First go, 25 points, reaching the top in the first try. Gabri Moroni, the super legendary, crazy World Cup competitor, just, well, he's getting ready for his second try. But that was really strong, Mona did. Yeah, for I mean, sure. that boulder um, looks a bit, a little bit like a carrot, uh, with the orange and green. It does, yeah. I wonder if Alex Magos is still uh, so keen on eating carrots as he was before. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? No, actually not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like if you look at his uh, social media account, he's, he's super like always posting like carrots for power. I should try that. Uh, even, even the stars on the signs, they kind of like relate to the shape of the carrot, don't they? Yeah, it was like <laughs> it was the boulder set by, by Carlos, the, the women boulder. Yeah, he, was, yeah, he sounded pretty super proud of it. Super, <laughs> super nice looking boulder. Yeah. They w we had like small adjustments. Um, they made the edges even a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you have a very close look at the edges of that boulder, you can see in this light. There's Gabri securing the first zone for the second time. But as you can see, it's like nothing he has Crawling in his up this delicate arete. Um, what's probably worth noting is that these holds have very, very, very little friction. It's not the typical um, non-grippy texture of a dual text hold, but they just come... It's a thin grain. Grit. Yes, it's a very fine, very fine grain. And you have to keep them clean during the competition. I'm actually happy to see that the, uh, they have a piece of carpet next to the wall because they can wipe the shoes off before stepping onto the yeah, wall. Yeah, and, and of course you have uh, Carlos uh, brushing the holes. And Carlos is brushing, <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, that makes a big difference always. Yeah, it's, I mean, all the professional athletes always brush their holes during competitions, but... It's really interesting to see, like... Um, Gabriel, uh, he, he, he chose a method uh, where he can go uh, really static in the in, in the first uh, moves. There are more dynamic ways, uh, yeah. which shouldn't be that safe, maybe. Um, but it takes way more time now, and maybe this is limited um, yes. at the very end now, because he probably has two or three tries less than... Oh, and I think that was the friction. Yeah. He stopped. He, he pulled his attention away from that left foot for a split of a second and that was enough for his foot to come off. It's always the problem with these boulders, like, y you just have to be aware of every single... Uh, class. Yes, you see the more, more dynamic version. The quicker one as well, isn't it? Uh, All right. Nice to see you. Yes, we already Gabri. have, like, 700, uh, more than 700 euros. Oh, coming uh, close raced. to the first thousand. 50 donations. Ah, uh, Gabi is a little bit uh, disappointed, I think. He didn't look happy. I yeah. think he, yeah, he would love to have like the, the 10 points for sure. Um, I think it, he ended up with five now, but we I can think see he it got in five there. in the end, yeah. All right, second pair of climbers entering the stage. Yeah, Alma really. best Vater and Philip Martin, so both from Germany. Yeah, Alma looked super strong in that boulder um, uh, during the day, so um, it's a she good possibility. She looks standing on the mattress, it must be said. <laughs> but we have a good possibility to see another top here, I think. Um, 
yeah, Philip Martin. Um, uh, maybe, maybe he can do it, he can do better. Um, we will see. But he will we, he will have a, a a hard time. It's a really tough boulder for the men. And I'm pretty sure the women's one isn't too easy either. It's crazy. <laughs> Alone this move here, Ima makes it look uh, quite easy. Uh, you can see the tension which is needed, like uh, to change the body position. But it's only one move away from the top. Come on, Emma. Yeah, looking for the right position, but she's pretty uh, she, solid. She can secure it. Nice. Yep. Okay, so we have the second flash for the women. Two, two flashes out of six competitors. It means, well, could mean anything. It could mean nothing. Yeah, I think like the star well, for, for the Well, Philip looks women. like he, he hasn't still climbed the boulder. No. <laughs> Just choking up, getting ready. I mean, it make, makes, a, makes a big difference, I think, um, for the mindset as well. If you have like a first boulder, which is maybe a little bit more easy, maybe you feel better um, for, for also like... That's a very fair point you're making, Fabi. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually super interested in, in running a research on athletes' performance, uh, depending on, on, the, on the whole, the, the performance on the whole, in the whole of competition, depending on how they did on the first boulder. And oh, I even nice dare say, yeah, yeah, Martin is on the way to the top. Yes. I even dare say that he made women, it look easy. Yes, um, might be suffering worse from failing in the first problem. That is something that will affect the uh, performance in the entire competition. If, yeah, maybe if here it's a little bit different because actually you know uh, which you know what's the coming. other bowlers are. You actually are, know yeah, what exactly. is coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, didn't find much. Uh, but still, Rest I think you have a good, a good feeling huh? if you if you come out and you have the possibility. If it's possible to flash the first boulder, you feel better. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Right, just uh, over two minutes remaining for Philip. Yeah, he wants it. You can see it in his face. Uh, it's crazy when you make a little progress every single try you have on the boulder. But then time is becoming your enemy, and the humidity, and tiredness, and dehydration, yeah, he and the mental battle. <laughs> he chooses so the, the dynamic version for the first move. If it works, it probably might be the more easy way, but it has a big chance of failure. Scarpa is one of the sponsors of today's event, right? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, so many professional athletes here uh, and all, all of them, they bring um, their sponsors. Um, you will also see them time to time in the list uh, donating uh, to CAC. Um, yeah, um, Scarpa is one of them. Uh, we Actually, we have already uh, a donation by Nepo Sport over mm. 200 euro, which is super nice. Philip Martin securing the 10 point zone in his Scarpa shoes. Can he stick that toe on that? Come on, mate, it's slippery, but you can do it. Oh, As you can see, look, Kuba, we already have like more than 50 donations. Yup. <laughs> yeah, we were laughing a little bit <laughs> in the beginning um, when we were thinking, ah. Oh, that it is a little bit like a home shopping television or something <laughs> with a donation and we should make advertisement for it but it's totally different you know it's like a, it's a support for for uh, for a really special um, movement you can actually say it's super big uh, by now climbers against cancer um, super super interesting uh, here comes uh, Jesse and Jörg Verhoeven Jörg Verhoeven. He's um, yeah, he's been he's been about for the longest period of time. This dude <laughs> climbed the nose in Yosemite. Took a. I did a little research on Jörg before this competition. He. Placed third in the Bouldering World Cup in 2003, if I'm correct. 
Oh, uh, possible. Jörg is, uh, for so many years... Uh, 2007, he was third in lead. <laughs> He's actually uh, yeah, bronze in um, World Championships in lead, and he was second in lead in the World Cup in 2005. Here you so can there see is Jesse's Jesse endurance. Yeah. Just chalking up. Yeah. Looks Looking really relaxed. Rather relaxed, yeah. She could be clipping in some quick draws and all that. Yeah, that's definitely a boulder uh, which suits Jesse uh, a lot. Um, at this point, it probably can be said that it's a little bit undercooked. It's a little bit too easy, isn't it? I mean, if we have three competitors flashing, then yes, it's. Yeah, you can say you can say easy. so, but on the other hand, um, you have on that uh, boulder, um, so you have to flush it. There but are places where you can make mistakes. Yeah, of course you can, and like um, now it ended up everyone is flashing, but imagine now someone not Absolutely. flashing the yeah, boulder like uh, or mm -hmm. not reaching the top, and then um, it makes a huge difference at the very end in the ranking. Yes, by all means. It, and I think it's even increasing the pressure put on the competitors exactly. that are to come. Yeah, because so if Afra makes, or any, any other competitor makes a mistake for that matter, yeah, of course you her can ranking say it's goes down. Undercooked, but always hard to say. It's, it's a test for efficiency, isn't it? You have to execute it. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's actually an interesting trick for, from the root setters. All right, Jorg, yeah, basically, is having the same. Yeah, he's, Trouble. The, <laughs> he's the oldest competitor, I think. Oh, don't use that word, man. He's yeah, not the my oldest. age, the I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's been about the longest time. Oh, interesting um, way of taking the starting position. Did yes. you notice that? Yes, yes. He was touching with his foot. Yeah. Uh, uh, a hold which meant... Uh, it was, it a was hand intended hold. for yeah. a hand, yeah. It would it be actually legal with IFSC rules um, in the current season? Not... Mm, it would be tricky, right? Yeah, this guy know, knows how to place his body on the wall. No hand rest there. And failing on the quick toe-to-heel swap. That's very nice when you have to delicately unlock your toe and place it for a heel to get your hips closer to the wall. But there is no space for any mistakes in that. Yeah, and uh, that's what, in this boulder, you can see exactly uh, what we mentioned earlier. Um, the competition that um, maybe the d the the max difficulty in that boulder is like you can't put such a high grading on it, um, but because yeah maybe maybe the moves are not something you can grade super hard. I was just thinking that that even like trying attempting to put a, a grade on it would be very difficult. Super difficult. Because where would you find a boulder that uses any grading systems that is similar style of climbing to this? What is this? I mean, this is not granite, is it? Is it sandstone somewhere? Well, more than granite, but is it really? I mean, <laughs> super special style of setting. Yeah, and I think like if you if you actually do the boulder, it yes, might succeed. might 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 feel easy. Um, but you can probably use so many tries <laughs> until you get there. I honestly do think you're right, man. I think it's exactly the case with this boulder. Like, it's hard to get anywhere near doing it, but once you nail it, once you learn the body positioning and everything, it'll probably get to the top and say, dude, that was easy. Why did it take me so long? Yeah, and we, s we said earlier before... Or maybe we were completely wrong. Maybe they will never <laughs> do it. <laughs> no, that, uh, that the climbers had like two hours for testing the boulders. Um, it sounds like like a like a, like a long time, but if you imagine that you have um, six athletes per gender um, trying four boulders, it's just like five minutes per boulder. So it's not such a long session, working yes. session on it. Yeah, 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 for sure. And it took them more than five minutes to learn just the first sequence on that boulder, and it wasn't getting any easier in the upper part. So Alex, uh, all right, let's check interesting uh, to see. Yeah. He, uh... Ape index minus three. What? Negative ape index. I mean, there are yeah, there are guys in the climbing community with negative ape index, but, um, yeah, impressive to see, nonetheless. So yeah. strong. Of Alex, I know he's, like, uh, super focused, and he, yeah, he, super he, wa he wants it today. Uh, he wants to take home the win. 
Yeah, for sure. And um, I'm dead sure there is a bunch of Israeli people watching and supporting Alex right now. You yeah, guys were, I remember last year, you guys were super active commenting on, on our YouTube uh, channel. Um, really like cheering for Alex. And I w I've been to Israel this, this year and I met the local yeah, people there. And cranking hard. Yeah. But supporting, there's a, yeah, Afro is finding this a uh, little bit less comfortable than other ladies. Yeah, I know why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's holding her shoulder. Holding, she was yeah. already uh, saying before the competition that she had some pain in her left shoulder uh, from the last um, wow. national champion. Alex Kazanov, nice, just secured the second bonus. And now the next move is oh, super yes. hard. Stack that. Check this out. And really Alex looks it. super strong on it. Dope. This guy wants to win this pump. That was really close. Two and a half minutes. If he keeps calm and takes like a minute rest, he has a good chance of sending that problem. I think if he doesn't wet rest. But this move long here, enough, up to that really bad sloper, yeah. this could probably put a big, big grade <laughs> on that boulder actually. Um, that's like nothing and uh, you squeeze super hard on that sloper. Yeah. It's all about the tension here. All about the body tension there, yep. Uh, and the tries are not getting better now by Afma. Mm. Uh, it's yeah. uh, really skin dependent as well, it's super rough, it's uh, new volumes uh, directly from the trade show as you can see. She is uh, holding her finger. New volumes are wrecking your skin in no yes. time. But she's smiling. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I mean, pretty big thing to even get an invitation to this conference, right? Yes, it's not only about the price money. I mean, the first, um, the winner of the competition today takes home like a thousand euro. Second, 500 and the third takes home 300 euros. Um, that's already something. Yeah, um, but what is it in comparison to this eternal glory, man? <laughs> yeah, it's nothing, is it? <laughs> no, I think uh, that's also not the intention of the climbers here. Uh, yeah. It's about being part, maybe testing yourself. It's always a challenge. Um, having such a highly... Yeah. Very solid on that move, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's, it's his... But as you can see, it's like... There is so much tension involved. He is trying hard, no doubt about that. Like he looks solid, but he's, yeah, again. I I think this left foot requires 120 percent of focus and attention. Like I was actually, I must say, I was really impressed when I saw his previous Alex's previous try on this boulder, where he just stood up on the left foot, barely using the right hand for for support. It was all about trust and all about generating this amazing feeling for friction for the left foot. Come on, Alex. It's going to yeah, stay. Just don't on, think dude. about it. Yeah, use the arete. If you think too it's much about it, you probably fail on that. And he's... Oh, yeah, and he's actually... Uh, most of the times he climbs in uh, different shoes, right? He doesn't use the uh, no-edge soft Las Portivas. He used the solutions. Yeah, Fabio looked at me like he never paid attention to what <laughs> climbing shoes Alex is climbing in. <laughs> Actually, I, I, th I thought um, I've seen him uh, climbing in the, in the Futura. Um, but I don't know. Like I think, um, of course, you if you change shoes, sometimes like one a harder shoe can be ha uh, can have advantages on on especially like edges uh, to stand on them. Yeah, I mean the difference Small it lips, makes for your you know. for, for your comfort is, is just incredible. So yeah, here Afra, like Afra has like zero points that can't be right. So uh, it's probably it will be updated. Yeah, in your Zero. Well, but did she secure so the first uh, zone? Did she yeah, for sure. It? So. Yeah. Okay. I think I've seen her on the second as well. Hmm. Well, this whole topic of climbing shoes, I mean, it's a long one. You could say it doesn't matter anything. If you're strong enough, you'll do anything. But um, they do make great difference. Yeah, it's always so hard to say. Not for everyone, the shoes, they, uh, they work the same, you know. Every foot is a little bit different. And... Um, 
so one one company shoe fits better uh, for for another person than the other. Yep, it definitely comes down to the um, type of your your body. That's a super interesting method. Uh, Yanya is um, yeah, using yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, She found a, a piece of volume that I, I don't think anyone thought about. Yeah, there is Alex. Yeah, the Sorry, the route setters intended uh, the green volume on the very left uh, just for. Um, for, for covering uh, that orange volume. Oh, she held it. Yeah, she got nice. it easy, but and do yeah, you yeah, think she, she was in control of that little swing there? Full control? Uh, um, um, pretty good control. <laughs> I mean... Well, if the top had been any smaller, would she have held it? I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> she got a top. Alex Migos. In... Not the softest shoe on the market. No, but like, um, I most of the times I think um, I, I I didn't see Alex uh, changing his shoes. It's like some other competitors do. Yeah. Yeah. There are guys who will come up to a boulder problem during a competition with Bringing a pair of shoes on the, pairs, on the yeah. yeah a pair of shoes on their feet and extra two pairs in a little bag and towel and six types of chalk bags and eighteen brushes. Yeah, come on, dude. Yeah. Nice so release. Alex has a different oh, method. Does have a different method. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was he was trying as well. Was okay. uh, was uh, Alex Kazanov was uh, was was doing before, and it didn't work for Alex. So, <laughs> but actually. <laughs> You never stick the next yeah, move. Okay. Um, <laughs> Wait, it's but a bad sloper, yeah? Like, let's it's not have any bad, doubt know. about it. It's a bad sloper, and the top hold is relatively good, yeah? Like, it's not a joke. Yeah, maybe like the method of Alex Kazanov um, is the better one. You're, 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 you're better underneath the, the yeah. slopers, and so maybe the next move is more simple. But for Alex, um, he couldn't hold that sloper when he was jumping to it. It was uh, really interesting to see, and he had found his uh, push-through method uh, to get to the next hold. Um, yeah, we will see if he can he can do the last move. Very out of interesting this weird to see body this position. Yeah, fingers crossed for this guy. Yeah, Start he's making the show here. Come on, man. Yeah, that little dent for the left hand is so poor. And but it only helps you to reposition your hips so that your center of balance is in the right place and you can quickly mash with the right hand and go on. Uh, we got Eddie Falk taking pictures tonight. He's the official photographer of IFSC. Yes. Pretty I sure mean, he'll get it's so crazy. Shots. I I would also say that um, the audience alone in in this gym. Uh, could be uh, donate now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my avatar says. Go on, guys, support. It's yours. Climbers huh? against cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Do listen to Cuba. <laughs> it's, for, it's for a good cause, you know. Uh, look, we're just 20 euros short of uh, the first grand. 57 people contributed tonight. Yeah, and as you can see, like um, many, many uh, gyms or uh, companies uh, donated as well. All right. As you've seen, Artline, Explosion. Yeah, Two companies for climbing holds. Aged 30. So not exactly your your top time for competition climbing. But, but does it mean super anything for these guys? Stuff. Does it mean anything for them? Yeah, Melissa has to pull hard. Yeah, she was struggling uh, on that boulder. Yeah. Before this is why I was uh, I couldn't totally agree uh, with the undercooking uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> idea of this boulder. I jinxed it plainly. I just said they undercooked it, and then <laughs> with <laughs> all the ladies Melissa were is doing the same method as uh, Yenya did, but now releasing the left foot is it's super tricky. difficult. Yes, yeah. strong shoulders oh. this lady has for sure. But she made it. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, probably burning twice as much energy. <laughs> Other ladies, yeah, come on. Yeah, but the body position. Get it in. Uh, yeah, see, it's, it's it's a big edge. It's a long edge, but it's not very deep, and it's certainly not positive. 
it's all about the body positioning. And the wall is overhanging there. Oh, yep. In case you didn't notice, it is quite steep. Uh, quite unlike on the men's problem. It's a slab turning into a little arete. So, actually, um, hardly any features required for the hands, if there is something for the feet. He owns a gym in Tokyo. One of the very famous ones. Yeah, but I, I don't think that's only one by now. Be pump. Uh, uh, yeah, fair point. <laughs> no, and I don't he think really he's the only owner. Like, if I imagine how much money uh, owning a gym in Japan must consume, it's a it's a pretty expensive business to run in any part of Europe, and in Tokyo. I mean, come on. But obviously, this guy comes from a very uh, very solid climbing background. Oh, super nice. Yeah. I mean, this looks Japanese so solid. Style making the time slow down. Yeah, I bet he's so good in those balance and coordination moves. Also Sticking this move. This time, yes. Second go, controlling the tempo. So point next zone. move, that's Going. that was the problem uh, yeah. earlier this session. I mean, there, there should be different methods as well. Uh, like jumping yeah, to Melissa the next Yeah, Melissa is zone. counting for some show. <laughs> Give it, guys, go on. Yeah, probably she doesn't have uh, so much power or skin for more tries. Yeah, but I mean, any any climber making it to the final round, they they are pretty battered at this point, right? I mean, they must have climbed through the fin through the qualies and through the semis. Semi-final is always known to be the hardest round of a competition. So I don't think they're actually like after the testing round of these boulders, they are any more tired than they would have been after climbing two rounds of a regular competition. Am I wrong? Probably not. So Come on, Sukuro. Yeah, the next move this on, caused so many here. trouble. Yeah. Those are the probably Melissa the three methods. like Making it to the top. Yeah. Oh nice. yeah, she oh. felt that. Yes. That was important, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now she's not missing so many points on the other uh, competitors. It's just by 0 0.1. 0.1, exactly. Yeah. Just like Yenya failed the flash attempt and then made it to the top. Quite an interesting take on the wall. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, the precision of movement. Yeah, but yeah, it's such a cool seconds, style. Left. Yeah. Sorry, not holding that this time. Yeah, really sad that we didn't see a top uh, on that boulder on the men's side. Yep. But it's uh, it is what it is. I mean, the show was good, wasn't it? Yeah. The problem I think on that boulder was um, this uh, this move to that hold we can see now in the picture. Uh, there were like three possible methods, like either jumping to the bad sloper like yep. Alex Kazanov did, mm -hmm. or you can you place the push right foot up. Exactly. Or do the Alex Megos way. Exactly. And but so for some reason, no one. Ah, look, we just crossed 1,000. Nice. Guys. You're doing great, guys. <laughs> You're doing great. Thank you very much. It's only another nine left, and we'll be the most amazing bunch of people tonight. Moving. So, yeah, three three solutions for, for the cracks of boulder number one for men. Uh, yeah, it's hard to decide. All well, interesting none really worked. I'm sure they would have been able to send it in the end, but they will probably need um, a bit of time and some air. Maybe it's too warm. All right. So yeah. all the competitors are through with boulder number one. The MCs here in the gym just explaining um, those crazy holds we can see now. Uh, the blue and yellow one on the men's side. Yep. It's dual tax holds. I think most people know already what it is. Um, it's like holds which have uh, two textures. I uh, think like many people will respond to this, the types of hold I hate. Yeah, some some parts are really, really slick and you can't yeah. do anything with it. And other it's parts... Dual texture holds are probably the most controversial product of climbing community of the last um, 10 years of indoor climbing because they usually arouse very strong emotions like people go, oh, I hate this stuff or I love it, it's very good for root setting and I hate it. 
Um, actually, you can you can force uh, climbers doing other things uh, you couldn't do without that. Yeah, yeah. This is the most efficient, really, the most efficient so tool for, it's for this. Super interesting. Uh, okay. Gabi looked super strong, and he does Perfectly now in the competition as well. Movement. So this is interesting because Gabri's flash looked effortless. He yes. Just, he just run up the wall, no trouble at all. But as we were watching them practice this boulder, I don't think they would be able to f accomplish this climb uh, within only four minutes if they had to flash it from isolation zone. I don't think any one of the climbers that I've seen practicing uh, manage to dispatch this problem in less than four minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's also, they, they're like small differences. It was, for example, for, for, for Gabriel, it was uh, super important that he's uh, moving just with one hand to the top hold uh, before yep. he was trying to go both hands uh, at the yep. same time to it. And this actually, he's changed his body position, mm -hmm. so he couldn't hold the top hold, which is not making any sense, <laughs> because normally it should be more easy with two hands than with one. But in this case, um, that was his solution. Um, and now he knew it, he came out, stayed nailed relaxed, it. and he just did Totally it. nailed it. I'm sure he stayed super like chilled out during the whole climb, which usually helps with, with those slabs. You, you, you cannot get too tense. Yeah, I think on the min bolt we can see more tops now uh, than on the first one. Uh, we uh, haven't seen I said any. a similar thing after seeing three flashes on female number one, and it wasn't exactly right. Um, yeah, what's happening with the with Mona? What's happening with the women? Uh, it's super complex first move. It's um, it, yeah, it's not only coordination; it's also faith in the foot. It seems to rely mostly on how much you trust that foothold and how much you really want to execute that move. Yeah, if, if, you, if you have any doubt in your mind and you're trying to commit, generate any momentum with your whole body, okay. But it seems as if, as if you land, you jump into the corner high enough and you land on the left foot relatively straight up you can kind of just press yourself into the into the corner, right? Yeah, I think like now the the hip needs to be a little bit higher up. The hip has to be high up for this, and it has to stay close to the corner. So it's when swinging for this one, you have to build a lot of momentum going upwards, not just to the side, right? Super because because if this it's super steep, this left foothold. And if you land with a bent foot on it, you're not just generating any friction for it. Yeah, but this well. is a c one kind of move. Um, I, uh, some people learn it super fast in a short session. Yeah. Um, you can learn how to move on this one. I don't think I, we've seen any flashes on that move. In the practice session. In the practice session, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone needed to learn it. Um, and then I think oh, I, this is a special style of climbing and it suits one climber more than the other. I'm yep. pretty sure we can, we can see... Um, we'll see a top on this one. Yeah, or even doing this move in the first try. Yeah, because... For example, um, now it's possible. Yeah, I think Alma is very used to this style of climbing. Yeah. Well, Philip Martin has got plus 12 ape index. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, is, is he the record holder of today? Uh, till now I would say yes. It's super difficult with the plus 12. I mean, um, where is he buying his shirts? Yeah, yeah. To all the dinner parties that he's invited to. <laughs> for, for, uh, here. Yeah, there we as go. We, as we mentioned it. Yeah. I'm uh, super strong in this style and also now it's yeah. so difficult now what she's doing and it nearly looks effortless. Now Soft shoes. Now holding the tension and you hard can muscles. See <laughs> super yeah. strong. But it's not over until it's over. Come on Alma. Yes. Nice.
beautifully secured oh, top for both of yeah. the competitors. Philip Martin. Philip Martin timing the problem first go. Lovely job. All right, so um, Philip and Gabri, ah, no, they are not tied. Philip Martin scored a better um, on the boulder number one. Two flashes. Ah, it's so hard to say. Huh? I I would the say York has a big chance of doing this. Yeah, for sure. Try. But but I would say that this even Jesse is world champion. That this isn't totally her style. I was I didn't want to say that, but this is what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being a, more of a lead climber. Oh, yeah, but sorry. maybe I'm totally wrong. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. I don't know, it doesn't really matter whether you're a lead climber or a boulderer. Like, to, to be really strong in the lead, you just have to perform so well in so many different aspects of climbing, right? Uh, no. And you have to stay on for longer on the wall. Yeah, look, Jesse. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Great performance. Yeah, she's probably really, really happy about that. Effortless, yeah. Oh. Yeah, lost attention in this call for a split of a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could see like, like the butt sticking yeah, out a yeah. little it while seems starting like the, the move. The top started traveling away from him suddenly. Like, <laughs> yeah, even even it's a it's a really long move actually. Like between yeah, the handholds. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's it, you might think that a taller um, climber as you uh, maybe has an advantage, but on the other hand, bringing the feet so high up. Yeah, then. height is not necessarily an advantage in this case, yeah, because he has to be so much more compressed to begin this movement. Like, they all have their feet in the same spot. And, yeah, he's the tallest climber? Yeah, definitely one of the tallest. I think he is the tallest, yeah. The, uh, the only one above 180. Well, the good news is where he just put his right foot in, that is grippy texture. <laughs> it's the holes are dual texture, but he's only grabbing onto the good stuff, which is not always the case, actually. Have you um, have you watched the lead um, World Cup in in Japan, the one that took place maybe a month ago? Probably. Um, it was starting with a sequence through uh, Squadra volumes and they had to stand with their feet on this super slippery surface. And they, the, the moves were rel relatively straightforward, they were just compressing the, the big volumes, but I think it must have been extremely uncomfortable for, for the competitors. So we have here some support for Yenya. We have two hearts, the Ukrainian and the German flag in it. Thank Daria. you very much from Daria. Yeah. 10 euros supporting CAC. I know one very strong uh, Daria, Daria girl from Ukraine, Daria Bililova. She, she, she had plenty of success in different competitions in Poland. She lives in Poland now. Daria, is that you? Ah, York. Yeah, it seems like because of his height, when he's squatting to, to leap for the top, his bum is just a little bit too far from the wall. And but uh, of course he's capable of doing that, no question. No question about that. But now it's also like if you if you, you didn't make it in the first try, you know, you, you get a little bit more stressed maybe. Yeah. Now you want to rush it a little bit more. Uh, that's super difficult. But, but that was so close, actually. This, it was close, but this is, um, from what I've seen, most of their attempts during the, um, the testing session, the first training, they looked like this. They were getting their hands into the slot, 
but because the hold is turned anti-clockwise, it's descending in the way that your swing is going, it's taking you. And it was really hard to actually stick that top. Yeah, so I, I remember the, the situation where um, someone, uh, I don't know who it was, uh, but uh, telling uh, Moroni um, that he should just grab it by one hand, I think it was Alex Kazanov, mm -hmm. um, telling uh, Gabriele. Um, and, and it worked. Yeah, it made a huge difference yeah. uh, for him. And maybe this is exactly also a mistake uh, Jörg was doing here. Um, I don't know if he was rushing because I think he did it in uh, in the working session. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Alex lost his focus. Look, that, yeah, that's a pity. Only cost him, but now it cost him like one. 0.1 uh, point, but yeah, I, I mean th those 0 0.1. They points actually eventually yes, they make can the make a difference. <laughs> difference, yeah. Who, who, gets, who gets to win the comp? Yeah, controlled, real nice. Yeah, I can imagine yeah, he's pretty strong, pissed good. off of him now. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's important that you do the boulder. Um, the ideal way is that we find we such a hard boulder uh, later and maybe just one or two climbers uh, can find a way up. That there, is, there is some interesting stuff coming up, I can tell you this sure. much. Yeah, yeah. Who was the tape artist? Uh, I think they all did it by themselves. I saw Martin Ramirez, the route setter running around with plenty of tape. I think he was doing plenty of that decoration. Yeah, we already um, mentioned him and, and Dirk as we did uh, with Carlos. Uh, we have even more route setters on the list. We shouldn't forget. And um, one really important uh, setter in this time now is like Reini Fichtinger. He's like shaper of Strader Holtz and uh, he was part on the setting team as well. He was setting this event last year as well. And I mean, he's, he's, he's Is he setting every World Cup? Like it feels like it. He's probably not, but... Um, I think he's not setting as many World Cups as he used to. But certainly one of the more experienced World Cup route setters and a fantastic climber himself. Yeah, Afra is really And a visionary as well. I mean, to be a route setter and a good climber, but to have this vision of, hey, I think the climbing hold market is clearly lacking this product. So I will... Oh, yes, yeah, Afra nice sticking Afra. that. Lovely. It's always great to see when climbers make progress. Yeah, and Afra is... Uh, it's, it's, it's always like... She's, she's always giving 100% uh, on so many competitions. Yeah. Uh, it's just oh, her, her willing bringing her up the boulders. Hard and fighter. always a smile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not. Uh, oh, ooh. she's bleeding. <laughs> she doesn't have much time to tape it all up. I mean, 50. I mean, seconds. she she was uh, she was licking her finger on the first boulder or already. Yeah. I remember. Dang. Yeah, well, that's what I say. hundred uh, percent. <laughs> did, didn't she take any time off before this competition to grow some skin? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, chalking before taping up is... Mm. Come on, Nicholas. Oh, Nicky, he's yeah. doing a terrible job there. He's t t <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, I'm sure <laughs> he's trying hard, but <laughs> obviously... <laughs> Nicholas Wichmann, yeah, okay. beta route setting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another, actually another legend in, in Germany, right? This, this guy has set some comps and worked that's, uh, quite a it's, lot. It's right? always hard to say what legend means, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, legend. It's a big word, legend. But yeah, for sure, he, he was one of the setters introducing the more dynamic and uh, funky climbing seal in Germany, for sure, yeah. I think he was one of the first people that people looked at him and they knew, oh, this guy is a root setter. Possible, yeah. He just became he, he be one of the first people to become famous for being uh, a root setter. 
Yeah, I mean, he was also, uh, he's doing a lot of social media. Um, there are many different ways of achieving that state. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah, like... Uh, working on social media is definitely one of them. And he started it in a time where it was not common, you know? It's like, yeah. so it's, you can also say maybe maybe not a legend, but like a visionary. A pioneer. Yeah, a pioneer, yeah. Mm, for sure a pioneer. Oh. Yenya, getting close. That was uh, looking really promising. Yeah, I think she'll get it. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Alexa. That's an unusual, rather unusual situation for this level of boulders. Get a no-hander. Yeah. But yeah he, he didn't want to like make that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, it's not a big problem. As we said, it's no. just important that he gets the top. Oh, Yenya did the jump yeah, with the first move. Plowing through. But it's not over there. Nope. No, Afla made it to that um, 10 point zone and yeah, that stopped her. I think there is, when I look at Alex Klein, there is some reluctance in him in, in executing that little foot cross. He looks like he really doesn't want to do it. <laughs> no, of course he wants. Go on, man. I think it's also like by the amount of uh, tries which happened, the, the holds are not getting better. You know, it's like you even it's brushed uh, after every try. You have like small rubber parts in the surface. Um, it can make a difference over over, over the tries, I think. Yes, even a crucial difference, unfortunately. Oh, nice! Now we uh, we made a big jump here uh, in our funding. Oh, that is a yeah, certainly. Really, really cool. Thank you very, very much. Thirteen hundred euros over, nearly fourteen hundred euros. We raised so far. Doing great guys. Yenya. Yes. Yeah, yeah didn't look clearly. Okay, Alex got it. Yeah, but Yenya, Yenya she was she missing was a little bit of tension there. Yes. Yeah, if, if there had been any type of foothold. I mean, it's crazy it to would see. I it mean, she's She's like one of the best Super easy. competition climbers in the world at the mm. moment. And then you have like other people, like maybe not so famous climbers, uh, perform uh, performing so good uh, as we've seen before. Exactly. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole trick about climbing, isn't it? It's super interesting to see that. We have people coming from different backgrounds and different um, experience in different ways. Yeah, this boulder is really sketchy also. Uh, Super sketchy. Yes. At, um, I mean, the the girls the were complaining in the beginning. Yeah, the holes are good, but they all just put the wrong way up, right? <laughs> like, I mean, there is just no stable way of controlling the... No, it, and it has so many possibilities of uh, foot slips or anything. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Yeah, that cross with no feet. Now she's rushing yeah, a little. She doesn't have so much time, yeah. but... Because they are dual techs as well. And the crazy thing about these half wooden dual texture holds is that the varnished part of the hold that has no friction is more slippery than um, fiberglass dual texture hold. So, so actually, it's a triple texture. It's a tr <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy texture hold, and um, they have no grip whatsoever. They are really poor. So you have to be super precise and unfortunately. We were talking about uh, Nicholas, uh, who was trying to uh, to put tape on uh, Afra's fingers. Yeah, trying. <laughs> trying. trying to rip <laughs> yes, the tape off the roll. That's why I was <laughs> saying that. Um, yeah, like he's, he's in combination with the team, with uh, Tobias Reichert and Manuel Wiegel, um, yep. also two uh, famous German setters. Uh, together they are the uh, beta route setting team. You're uh, connected to beta route setting, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, but, but so humble. climbing climbing world is small, uh, especially in Germany. And um, 
Yeah, they are doing their um, their own holds now as well. Uh, we can see them later in the next boulder. Yep, it's coming, guys. Uh, but we saw some last year in this competition. Um, Beta Root Setting did a collaboration with Voltomic, released some very unique, very interesting shapes um, to be purchased. Yeah, we can we can see later. So. Maybe one of the favorites today. What do you think? Looked super strong. Tsukuru Hori. Yeah, so good. Yeah, I think if you have a Japanese person competing, it's kind of understand. It's, it's always. I mean, it's all, especially yeah, yeah. the style. It's also. Yeah, um, their style is incredible. I mean, they're, they're just. Are there schools where you can learn style? What is that? Surely in Japan, or it's just the samurai blood that's like running through their veins. <laughs> but it's um, yeah, it's it seems like it seems seems typical for for the for the Japanese climbers when you watch them in a comp in competitions. They uh, learn the movement. Oftentimes they learn it faster than, than other guys, and it's just something about uh, I don't know the, the body proportion or the body size. Yeah, but it's also about like what you what you're used to. Uh, the, I think like the 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 route setting and uh, um, the 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 quality of competition boulders yeah. set in normal. Uh, but saying that, I mean, if you watch a competition in Japan, it's not all crazy new school. No, for sure not. Melissa Leno. That's, that's being creative. <laughs> yeah, she's smiling. <laughs> yeah, she's creative, but she didn't like that style. Yeah, to go here with yeah, some problems. Second, second attempt of, uh, Actually, uh, of I've the top hold. I've, I've, I've seen him matching the top hold uh, without going to to, to to the flat part of the hold he was like tipping with two fingers the the lower part of the mm. top hold so he was so stable stable before on his feet but yes it, it seems to be different now in the competition well I mean he's the last guy out and it's not working in his turn yeah it's not and Melissa yeah. didn't like that way here she gave everything for sure yeah Gamba, Gamba. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, when you started climbing, was climbing such a big thing in Japan, or w was there like uh, like one single breakthrough? Yes. It's really hard to say. Like on the competition, seem it, it, it seemed like it. Um, it was just one day on the other. Uh, where, where, like, suddenly the Japanese guys they, they, they just kind of appeared out of nowhere and started winning everything that was there to be won. Yes, because, like, in, in early 2000s, there was Daiko Yamada who was crashing all the hard stuff outside, then a little bit later, you had Sachiyama who, like, in the late 2000s, I think, he was winning the lead world cups, but. The current boom of amazingly strong Japanese boulderers and, and lead climbers is a phenomenon, I think. It's, it, I would be really curious what it came down to. Was it because, for instance, was it because um, many more gyms started opening in Japan and many more people were exposed to climbing as an activity and they just, they could uh, develop their potential or, or you know what is or have they got the most amazing trainers or is the diet or what is it I'm just really um, fascinated by this I must say yeah so many speculations uh, about that it's a little bit of a mystery but there is no doubt about the fact that they're bloody strong these guys there is something yes <laughs> yeah there is something and no one knows what the Japanese secret is maybe Benny maybe Ben Hartman he will never tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take this secret to his grave. Yeah, a German coach uh, training the Japanese. Uh, is he a coach really, or is he just like a European spy in the Japanese team? <laughs> <laughs> well, just I mean, there's more secrets just than him answers knowing to that. this. Yeah, no idea what the real story is. All right, end of number two. Two boulders gone. 
Yes. No Half top time. for Melissa on that one. Yes. Yeah, probably. She's. I think lately she's been practicing more the uh, outdoor style, right? Uh, yeah, I just know that uh, she's really, really close on the action direct and Frank and Euro. I was just going to say that, yeah, on, on my research before this, the latest post of Melissa was uh, on her pulling on action direct, which is a legendary sport route. Yeah, I Frank think she, she climbed it a few times now with uh, just one. One, one uh, rest, uh, okay. so uh, super close on that. Yeah. That would be a big breakthrough in the first female ascent would be then for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the story of Action Direct actually tells a lot about the development of modern climbing because but it waited for ten years for the first repetition. And in the last 10 years, it's been repeated like 15 times. Yeah, what Gabriel Moroni is climbing on the black volumes. Those are the ones we were talking about yep. before. The beta volumes. Um, really, really weird first move. And now probably this the crux sequence, getting to the next crimp and moving to the top. Heel hook. Yes, He's bring it in. It. Bring yeah. it in. Nice. Okay. Ah. So solid. There, there is a little cover-up hold for the left hand. The 15 zone is not a good crimp. What it may seem like from the bottom, it's actually pretty poor. Yeah, this boulder uh, number three for the women. I was, yeah. uh, I was uh, testing it uh, uh, with Martin Ramirez uh, yesterday, and. Uh, there were so small changes, uh, changed the boulder entirely. Uh, so crazy. Nice. That's well, one method, yeah. Yeah. Super good. Mona they, is doing a fantastic a job today. With this sequence on yes. The practice round. It's something and, um, you need to learn. Yeah, maybe they just had enough time to, for, for learning that. And yeah, what's coming is interesting. It's a good thing that they're all experienced. And now, I such an interesting last move. Yeah, very, very nice last move. Um, extremely high risk. Yeah, it's a one-two move, so you have to, uh, as you can to see now. the left hand quickly. Exactly, so you a can. A Gaston into a side pull. Yeah, just like That this. you can compress the holds. Um, I've seen this move other. done during the practice round. It looks doped. It looks really good. But <laughs> when they commit to it fully, they can't fail the move because if they commit and fail, they will land in the super weird position. <laughs> yeah, but that's competition. I mean, it's part, part that's of part that sport. Of it, yeah. So Monakena doing so good today. Yeah. Really impressive to see. How was Martin doing on this boulder? I guess he was just cruising it up and down. No, I mean, hard to say, you know. It's like um, also the setters, they get more used to the boulder. So in the beginning, uh, yeah. we have a hard time when we test yes. it. Um, but then later on, if you have, when you've done it 50 times, you know, yeah. um, it's good. then it's more easy, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Especially really, on those type really of funny moves. because most of like, the root setters usually aren't exactly as strong as the competitors. They come close. I mean, the strong root setters are close to competitors. But to be a good root setter, you don't have to be as strong as the competitor. But the biggest difference is that the competitors, they have four minutes. And root setters sometimes work for four days on one boulder. So they root setters need more skin. But <laughs> it takes a totally different set of skills. You have to be patient. So come on, Mona. Yeah, been there already. Probably the last try, 20 seconds. Yeah, probably. Let's just hope she has enough contact strength left in the left arm. Come on. Go on. Oh, that was close. I, I think she missed it a little bit. She was, she went like an inch too far to the left. Yeah, but the right arm. right hand was uh, nicely high up. Yeah. The hold is uh, a little yes. bit better on, uh, on the uh, upper part. Actually, that looked really promising. Ah, she slipped. 
Well, what I wanted to say about the route setting and being a part of the process of the problems being set, if, um, if you set it and if you participate in it from the beginning, um, you kind of witness all the tweaks and changes and you can move on it. And oftentimes, if you're confronted with a ready problem at this level, it's just like a slap on the face. Like if you come and see it, try it for the first time, not being at the World Cup level climber, they are very hard to climb. That probably suits her style, right? I mean, it's uh, boy, it's hard to say what Emma's style is. I mean, she's she can she can nearly climb everything. Yeah. As long as it's a competition boulder, it's her style, isn't it? Actually, I just saw her in competition boulders. Um, she sent an 8B in Silveretta. Oh, Philip, Martin. Philip Martin cranking oh, hard, yeah. all doing so yeah. good today. Not many people had him on the list, but he's really, really fighting for the win today. Mm. As you can see, now he moves in first place. Yeah. So far, <laughs> very interesting standings. Alex Kazanov is. 0.3 points ahead of Alex Makos before attempting the third boulder problem. Yeah, Which everything can change, yeah. of course. Yeah, because they actually both scored worse <laughs> on the second problem than Philip Martin and Gabri Moroni. Yeah, but true. they scored better on the first one. So, I'm on now. Yes. Can she do the last move? Yeah, she pressed with her legs to get enough height for that shoulder press. She's one of the smaller athletes. Well, I mean, none of the athletes are coming close to... Nice. Uh, that was impressive. Yeah, dope stuff. I really hope to see a replay of that. I was wondering, like she, she, she was moving away from the boulder pretty fast. Oh no! Now, now she's smiling. I yeah, expected even more <laughs> on the top hold. Oh, talking about the body sizes and ape index. Uh, so Kai Harada. He's, I think, 165 or something, below 170, plus 20 ape index. <laughs> Sounds interesting. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> Yeah, he can tie his shoelaces without bending down. <laughs> Something like that. Right, Jesse Fields, Jörg Verhoeven. Yeah, this lady is well determined tonight. Oh, How is she doing close. in the standings? Did you did you pay attention to her scores so far? Has she got any chance of winning tonight? I mean, everyone still has a chance of winning, but it's... Uh, she flashed the first and she flashed the second, didn't she? So if she flashes this one, I think she's going to move the lead. Can she? Uh, that should be right, yes. And Alma is doing really good because she sent this boulder second go. So it's... Yeah, she was, she was uh, sending every boulder now. Mm -hmm. Jesse placed second. So... Ah, you're glued in it. Yeah, it's the foot is so high, the body position yeah, yeah, yeah. is so awkward. Again, is um, so putting the taller climbers in a in a particularly uncomfortable position. Oh, that is interesting now. Can she do it? Not in the first try. Not enough. Not committed enough. Yeah, the MC says that she is a little bit low, and he might be right. She was trying to 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 get the top hold quite far low, 
Um, it's better on the upper part, as we said before. Yeah, and you don't get to rate this much swing to the side. I mean, it's still impossible to hold the top hold with only right arm. You have to like double clutch it with the left. But the higher you go, the less swing you have. And it's better as well, yeah, it's a better, yeah. better edge. So maybe she heard it. And uh, she's going to aim higher now. Hopefully. Jorg rolling his body over the line of volumes, trying to squeeze yeah. them with his heels. This, I think from today, this is the closest it would come to outdoor climbing, isn't it? I don't know, yeah. I mean, you have weird shapes sometimes outdoors. Yeah, <laughs> truly. I can imagine this thing being a part of some weird crag somewhere. Nice. Uh, yes, Jesse. Second yeah. go again. So they're, ti they're tied, aren't they? Uh, she and she Alma needs to match the top all. She has to match the top. Yeah. Okay, so for these two ladies, what is it going to come down to? Um, I mean, by four. yeah, I mean, if you have the same uh, amount of points uh, as we have now with yeah. seventy-four point nine, um, actually, it comes on um, the uh, numbers of uh, tops, the amount of tops. Well, ultimately, it will come down to the fourth boulder because these. The, the our our team of root setters are a bunch of wizards, and <laughs> perhaps they have just dialed it on on um, making them perfectly difficult. It's a perfect scenario for a competition, right? That you have a the crazy masterminds. <laughs> yeah, the crazy masterminds when you have two competitors that are going head to head, and then at the final move of the of the final yeah, it boulder. Yeah, can't, can't be better huh, for yeah. the audience. Yeah, and for the competitors as well. So Jorg is cranking hard, but I think he's starting to feel a bit worn out. So we are by 82 donations. That's so nice to see. Over 80 people finding the way on the website. bolehalle e 4de Uh, we have one mastermind coming <laughs> in here. Beer in his little setting pouch. Dirk Ulrich here in our booth. Yeah, did, they worked hard for this show to happen. Especially the E4 team. It's, it's, it's such a big thing to piece together, isn't it? I mean, if you have competitors coming from all over the world, um, all the settings to, to, to be done. And that and still it's controlled. Yeah, Alex just flows through that. Yeah, one armor. <laughs> uh, why not? <laughs> like young Chris Sharma, right? <laughs> Excellent. Rolling the way up. I mean, it's good that those holes are red colored. <laughs> she That's lost. one of the questions that I wanted to ask Carlos. Has he got a favorite color of holes to set with? But Me? No, Carlos. Who? Carlos Catari. I ah, to Carlos. Oh, I, I think he We were too busy talking about important stuff to really I mean, delve into that. He probably has an interesting answer to that question. <laughs> Yes, this move is... Yeah, she looked a little bit tired already. Uh, moving to the crib. Yeah. And then uh, the missing skin is not making things better. Certainly not. I mean, how many fingers are taped up? Four? <laughs> but she's enjoying it. Or maybe oh, no, enjoying is three. wrong. It's only three. It's <laughs> okay. Uh, there was not much missing, I think. Yeah. Like two, three centimeters... More. It's a funny one, this boulder, yeah, because on your way, on your way through the first three zones, 
you have to stay tense in your core for a long time because you don't really have a comfortable position for your feet and you're always like bridging, you're pushing out with your arms and this is getting your core really tired and then at the end you have to leave, you have to execute this move, uh, the, the, the move where the core swing is ultimately what pulls you off the wall. So if you don't hold the tension for that split of a second, sorry, it's, it's a failed attempt and a tiring one as well. It's also the concentration. Is this new school setting? Uh, hard to say. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a perfect the competition setup because it's high risk in terms of um, possibilities for failure, not in terms of injuring yourself. Just you can fail in so many spots in this boulder. It's technical and it's awkward, and you have to figure out what to do on your way up and then it has this big like show move at the end which in, in my opinion makes it a really nice comp, comp style problem yeah but the main the question was like a new school boulder and i would say mm, those those competitions uh, today is it's just made by professionals and there are so many thoughts behind everything and uh, it's so often uh, mixed perfect perfectly up in styles um, I think Carlos said uh, in the uh, in the very beginning that uh, uh, that we want to find s a complete climber here today. Yes. So testing all all styles in the different boulders, or in in case of that boulder, it's testing g g testing already quite a few styles in it. Which one is the most old school from the ladies? Boulders, in your opinion? Most old school. I mean, the second boulder was number old one school. Yeah. was fairly old school, burly, just keeping the tension. Yeah, but, but the except it's uh, set by volumes, <laughs> which is uh, no. But I mean, old school in terms of movement, not not in terms of the setup. I mean the the. You find that style even more often, I think. Um, especially last year, you've seen some competitions really focusing on more static moves um, to not use new or old school <laughs> in that case. Mm. Yeah, of course I know what you mean. Um. It's a very interesting discussion, I think, in the in the setting and in the climbing community, like. How good is old school? How good is new school? What's this? What's that? But I think for a modern competition taking place in 2019 and the future, we just have to cater for all the styles. We have to provide all the styles and test all the abilities of the climbers. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, super strong, yeah. yeah nice. I mean, she is just doing what yeah, she needs to do yeah, yeah, today. Like, totally relaxed. On that and here. And Come Alex, on Alex. Yeah, nice compressed the red. Yeah, it did look so easy uh, than uh, yeah, when, uh, when Alex Kazanov yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it's a fun competition. Yeah. I thought he was going for one more then. <laughs> yeah, look, Alex Kazanov is looking pretty solid there. He's always at least one try ahead of Alex. They, they're scoring very similar results, but he's just climbing, dispatching these boulders faster. I bumped into Alex just a second before the competition started and asked him how he was feeling about the boulders and he was like, yeah, I have a good feeling. Yeah, and especially the last boulder is a boulder which could suit both climbers. Um, I mean, I don't want to say too much. Um, we will see the boulder. Yep. But it will be, it will stay interesting. Alright, boulder number three, last competitors. Can Melissa flash it? Hasn't been flashed yet, right? Second go was... Um, uh, was Alma flash it, I Alma think. Alma did it second go. Second go. And so did Jessica. 
Oh, that was for this guy. <laughs> it was like a Sunday walk, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and just yeah. casual jumping down. Easy. Job done. I think. Did she go a slightly different method? She stayed super low on her feet. I think that, yeah, it wasn't that different to what the other ladies did. Well, anyway, I mean, there is a different solution for the bottom part of this problem. Um, I honestly doubt there is a different solution for the upper part of this problem. <laughs> Come on, Melissa. She was, I think she was the first lady to do this move. Yes during the practice round. There is a flash for Melissa. Well, good. Perfectly done. Ah, oh, she's happy now. Yeah. All right, are we off to bowling number four? The last... Seems like it. And really, I mean... Uh, everything is open. I think uh, it totally depends on the uh, the climbers performing yeah. the last boulder. Um, there are very slim chances of those guys flashing this problem. Not to say it's non-existing, but to emphasize they are slim <laughs> because th this is a hard. It's would you say it's, it could be the hardest problem from... On the women's side, it is. Uh, I was talking about the men, actually. Ah, okay, uh, on, the, on the women, it's probably the hardest boulder, the number four. Um, on the men's side, um, it's really hard to say. Probably, if you put um, like a grading system on those boulders, you could be right. I think uh, that's probably the, the boulder hardest yeah, grade. by number. I think the most strength is involved in that boulder here. And what has to be said... Come on, this is handmade, homemade even. It's a volume with some black magic covered with black slippery tape bit by Stefan Otter. <laughs> he's, he's, he's another crazy mastermind behind the uh, craziness of E4 and I bet he was sitting on his own at 4 a.m. in the morning just producing that volume somewhere. So Especially we have the donations ball. again uh, on the right hand side. So now is the time. If you haven't done it, check out the homepage and uh, maybe leave a small message and a small donation for CAC today. Funky oh. move here, super smooth. Very interesting new school <laughs> move there. Yeah, actually, right. you perfectly have to do executed. it like that. Yes. Yeah, perfectly it's executed. A bit of a hand jump there as well. I mean, for 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 this sequence, actually, there are two possibilities. Um, um, there's a second method. Uh, you can use uh, the toe hooks on the right hand side. But Gabi is super yeah. strong here, I mean, so in control. This boulder has been changed uh, a bit, but I was not expecting Gabi to just like cruise through the whole thing. No, it it's puts it uh, puts him in a really strong position. Yeah, yeah, that's really good effort on his behalf. I mean, now uh, the both Alex they have to deliver if they want to. Um, move in the first places. I mean, they have a good chance because yeah. of uh, the first boulder. Yeah. Yeah, but check this out. He actually flashed B2 and B3. Just like Philip Martin did. <laughs> so Philip now flashes number four. He's moving to the lead. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, art of route setting is not just about setting the right boulders, it's mostly about creating a good show. And 
Yeah, especially results. here today. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's one of the highlights of the trade show. It's uh, the the trade show ended today, and um, this is a little bit um, like a final celebration of the trade show as well. That looks like a super old school classic sequence in climbing, doesn't it? Just a strong cross move, bad feet and stuff. Then it then it goes a little bit more funky because you kind of have to jump to a crimp and kill the swing with a big foothold. But yeah, uh, but but also the sequence. Um, there's the way where the uh, probably the best way is to do um, two moves um, during one. <laughs> It's like a like a one two, um, so to the next hold um, to control that move uh, like statically like is oh, it's n I, I wouldn't say it's not possible, but it's definitely a different uh, different difficulty. I think the most easy way is moving with the left hand up in the first dish and moving Crossing directly with the left and swinging on the left and catching the right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cheetah Taji with a little jib screwed on to the top of it. The main difficulty well, is th the body there's position. The th there's the theory, yeah, but <laughs> we saw we saw the ladies and they were having a hard time with this sequence. Yeah. Maybe it got tweaked, maybe they changed something to it, although I doubt it. I mean... Well, I personally think it's uh, it's the hardest boulder in the women competition. Yeah. And that's so mean to have it's it as the last boulder as well. It's the steepest and then the longest, right? It's got the most... So Mona is happy. <laughs> she did a fantastic job today. Yeah. It probably, right. probably won't be Euros. first place, but... 88 donations. Come on, Yen Yen. <laughs> Franken power. <laughs> Someone wrote. So, is that uh, is uh, Alex uh, Migos? Uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, meant by Alex that. Migos fan. All right. What is Philip going to do about his two flashes in the previous? I mean, boulders. If he flashed, flash he has five points uh, more and, uh, than, than Gabriele Moni and he will move in first place for now. If he flashes this, he's yes. in a really good position. And he has the mindset to do that. But it's hard. I, I was I mean it genuinely impressed by Gabri's oh yeah, yeah. I, he d he did make it look easy um, and it's not uh, yes uh, exactly where is Alba? so nice the first sequence I mean this boulder is uh, actually it's a it's a two boulder thing yes <laughs> look at that okay the top hold will take the last strength out of her but yeah, matching the top hold is not so easy it. but she just had enough there she goes flashing but All a right. climber in this caliber fantastic um, she's got really well here super good <laughs> what is jessica build going to do about it Uh, really spectacular yeah, as well. Yes, very committed. I th I think she she had no doubt in her head about controlling this move and just sticking it. Yeah, another boulder I mean set by 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 Dirk and uh, Martin? Martin. Yes. Um, I, I just forgot one setter on the list. Uh, I didn't mention yet. Ed, uh, this is uh, Matthias uh, Wojtnik. Uh, he did like a super good job here as well. Super strong climber. Uh, Important part of the team, I would say. Every root setter is a very important part of the team. In in, in all the cases. Yeah. Now, now what uh, what we see uh, Philip is doing here uh, looks a little bit more like the uh, the working session. 
Um, the athletes yes. were struggling pretty hard yes. on that boulder. Yeah, but um, pulling off such a big event I is not only the route setting part. I mean, you have the whole team of the climbing gym that's organizing it that have to take a ton of phone calls and answer hundreds of emails and arrange with all the clients and inform everyone around. And it, it, it's this organizational extent of, of this task is, is not only about getting a few cool guys in who will set some nice boulders and then inviting some strong competitors that will climb them. It's it's a really big and tough job, and I th I'm, I'm sure that anyone who's when we were we were talking about those crazy masterminds, you know, um, I mean they are really crazy, um, and th that's a really really important as well. Um, just like doing something, what works is not their expectation, you know. Yeah. Everything needs to be perfect here. Um, it's yeah, w wherever you can find it in this gym, it's. Um, Everything is tried to, uh, to, to, to bring it close to perfection. Talking about the last root setter that you just introduced, that, that was Matt that was Matt brushing the starting holes of the problem number four. So as you can see, not only actively setting, but to the very last move, trying to make trying to yeah, to make it a perfect environment for, for the competitors. There he is with a long brush, masters of stone. All right, that's Philip Martin. Um, no, he scored nothing on that bowler, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, he, I, I think he he didn't secure uh, the first zone. I don't so. think he did. Man. Okay, Jessica Pills. If he flash, if she flashes this problem. Um, well, yeah. I think she stays in second. Let's see the overview. <laughs> but Tuffy. such a smooth move, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the move is great. The move is great, but um, physically very demanding. Yeah, fully in control. Yeah, I mean. Okay, so there's risk number one. Come on, Kubo, she's a world champion. Dealt with. So now she's got number two. Actually, looking relaxed. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. she's so professional. Open crimp. Yeah, closing the crimp. Yeah, it's a small hole. Matching the top, she flashed it. So I think her and Alma have exactly the same score. True. They 99.9 flash boulder number three, which they both sent in second try. I mean, I in the case, um, there are the... the, the the number or the amount of points are the same. Um, it goes uh, on the amount of tops, uh, which is um, identical uh, as well. And then later on, it comes to the amount of flashes. Oh, uh, number of which in this case is still the same. So <laughs> exactly. I think they're gonna have to like pull a one armor contest or, no. or arm wrestle. In this case, actually, <laughs> uh, we will have like two winners. Yeah, um, seems that way. More expenses for the competition, I would say. <laughs> I don't know how all the regulations Dude, are. As far as I know, it's more money for climbers against cancer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jorg. We know it's hard. Yeah, this is like Gabri just. He had his moment of clarity in this one, I think. I so often uh, when you see Gabriele uh, climbing, he's like, oh, 
I think if if he makes a move possible, he can nearly repeat it uh, every time again. Um, hey, dude, do you remember when when Gabri Moroni took a win in Japan? The final boulder that granted him the win was set with exactly the same voltonic volume. How do you know things like that? Um, I don't even watch that many climbing <laughs> competitions. <laughs> but I, when I see s an image, I recollect it pretty well. Mastermind. Pretty good memory, I guess, for, for memorizing images. Nerd. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> But yeah, it was. Uh, they were different color, but they were the same shapes. Super awkward boulder, and I think he was the only one to top it. Then. Yeah, doesn't see this style. It's not something you would see in, in, in uh, El Cap. <laughs> Sixteen. So our standings. Hundreds. Hey, come on! We're coming close to hundred donors. Seven people more, and we'll cross the line of hundred people that donated. Yeah. yeah, and it looks like Jörg is a little bit too tall. Um, when he when he kicks in the toe hook, he's not getting a lot of pressure on it. Fabi, I think we're starting to sound as if we're really making excuses for Jörg for being too tall for this competition. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's perfectly fine with the size of his body. I think he's an extraordinarily good climber. When, when uh, there is no doubt about when it. When Moroni did it, it was like he he touched the hold uh, he was going for and immediately built up tension to the yeah. left foot. Yeah. That made it made it look so easy, and uh, yeah, the others are definitely struggling at the moment. Mm -hmm. Gabri. So Alex should. Uh, yeah, dude, dude, should Gabri do that. That's his style, I would say. Well, yeah, and I think he's particularly motivated to do it as well. For sure. He really wants to get this done because then he is ahead of everyone. Yeah, if he climbs this problem and he climbs it quick, then I think he, he has the win in his pocket. Sure. Because he scored the best yeah, on, the, on the first problem. Yeah, I think Alex Migos only has yes. the chance um, to go in lead when uh, when Alex Kazanov is not Reaching, topping. Yeah. yeah, if he doesn't top it, if he reaches the third zone and Alex tops this, then Alex gets the win, if we're correct. It's nice that the climber has it in their hands, actually. And feet. Your faith is in your feet, man. <laughs> we see a lot of climbing today. So many tops. Yeah, plenty of tops. True. Which is not too bad. Really nice to see people succeed. Yeah, competition that's that is overcooked may be a good show, but I think in the end it le leaves everyone a little bit dissatisfied. Just not seeing enough. Even if the score is clear and the competitors say that it was all good. Yes. Ah, oh, nice. That looks good. Yeah, it's interesting because yeah, it's interesting because in the end. Um, none of the climbers actually went for toe hooking. On the right hand side, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was probably the intended beta by the route setters uh, to um, kick a toe hook on the right hand side. Yes. I think if. I mean, Alex Migos is coming out now. I saw him doing the toe hook version uh, earlier yeah. in the practice. So we will see. Um, I think like later in the session, because that was the most obvious way to do it, uh, was kicking the toe hooks. They, everyone tried it with them. Yeah, but then they figured out this method of placing their left foot on top of the, um, the this crazy big volume. Yes. And that uh, just allowed them not to have to 
look for anything on the right hand side. I think Alex's score was wrong for a, for a second. He was uh, he was awarded 25 points for this top, but he actually sent it second try. Yeah, I mean it's only like a, uh, a tenth of a point, but um, we'll have to sort this out in a second. So Afra has her trying hard face. Yeah, I think she's looking forward to that clock to stop counting. <laughs> it's like, last 45 seconds of suffering. I'll do my best. Come on, one more time. She looks really motivated yeah. for suffering. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to develop some kind of affection for suffering if you want to be a pro climber, right? Because they're, they're bleeding like every, thing, every second competition they take part in. Not today. Not today. 95 donations. I mean, we are at the last boulders. Not many, many climbers to go. But I think we can make the 100 donations today. What do you think? Ruth? Yeah, I think it's within reach. Look, 96. Yeah, only four short. Only four short and two more climbers, yeah? Four more climbers. Four more two more couples. Alex Megos. Is he going to flash it? Yeah, I think he might flash it. He was looking super solid on it. I mean it's his style, isn't it? In the practice round this problem was significantly harder. Uh, mostly um. because of the positioning of the crimps. Ah, <laughs> oh, Alex. No flash for Alex. Yeah, missed the toke. Yeah, anyhow, Didn't so the problem the was harder spot. because um, the crimp that comes after the big volume awarded five points was more anti-clockwise yeah, so yeah, you yeah, really yeah. had to get it right and it was a super tight gap between the crimp and the hole that was covering up and with that crimp being positioned anti-clockwise the toe hook was more important Yenya, yes beautiful and secured it immediately brought the second hand to the hold And it's yes. top here. Oh, come on. Yeah, he's a, his le left leg is totally stretched out. And it looks like... He, he he needs to bend it a bit, a little bit, to to create the the tension. Yeah, slipping out then. Or maybe he just had too many carrots before this problem, and is just heavy on the on the upper, in the, the lower half of his body. He's helping himself now, and he's trying to to catch the the swing a little bit with the left hand on the black volume. Yeah, yeah, this guy could hold it single handed, no problem, but what about the momentum, right? So, if it stays like that, I mean, Alex yeah. would, uh, would. Yeah, but Philip Martin didn't do the fourth problem, if I'm correct. He, he didn't get anything for the fourth problem, right? True. Then yeah, then I think we have to fix the, the results. So he would end up by 60 points. So we have in first place Alex Kalanov Alex sitting. Is, yeah, yeah, and uh, I think um, it's already clear now. Uh, Alex will take 
why he will protect the win from the last mm. year. Defend his title, eh? Yes. Well deserved here. And at the moment, if uh, if Alex Mingos doesn't find a way here in this boulder, um, uh, Gabriele Moroni will be in second place. Yeah. The funny thing about this type of movement is there is only really one solution, and if it doesn't, it doesn't suit you, you're doomed. You're, you're, just, you're not going to claim this problem. And even though Alex Megos would cruise from th through the upper part of this problem. I mean, Alex is, is, is really smart. Um, he Now he's trying to catch the toe hook a little bit more on the left. So, um, uh, oh. But as you can see, then the angle is not yeah, like perfect. Like and he slips out of the toe hook. There is nothing you can really change in your, in your method. Right? Like, if you're not getting it right, you're not getting it right. And you're doing the right thing, but you're not getting it right, and you're not getting it done. And it's that's that. All right, no top for Alex. So, uh, I should never bet any money on predicting climbing results, because so far I've failed miserably predicting any single climber on any single boulder. So I just stick to commentating what I see. Oh, is that Robin Gray? It is. All right, last couple for tonight's show. Indestructible Tsukuru Hori and Melissa Lendo. Yeah, two really stylish climbers. What? Stylish climbing climbers. Stylish climbing climbers. Yeah. Uh, that was close. Yeah. He thought it was over before it was over. Yeah, Melissa, oh, nice that, control. That looks easy when Melissa's doing it. Yeah. It is not, by the way. <laughs> yeah, classic. Come on, give me some. Doing this stuff for you, come on. Yeah. Celebrating a little bit early here. Yeah, a little bit early. Yeah, that was definitely within his uh, abilities. Uh, crossing. Other guys didn't cross this move, right? Um, I think um, Gabriela oh no, did as well. They, maybe they did, yeah. And top for Tsukuru, second go. This guy knows how to climb. Belisa taking a longer rest. I mean, she knows that she can do it. Yeah, but it's not really a problem that you can have too many tries on. No, it's really long, so... Yeah. Ideally, you want to flash it. Yeah, but it's pretty controlled. So, now the move. Can she stick it this time? She's, she was, um, she stayed with her right foot on the little jib for super long, and by the time she had a crimp in her hand, she was trying to release the right, right foot to kill the swing on the big foothold. But there was too much impetus, there was too much momentum taking her body to the right, and that's why, yeah, 103. Look, yeah, I think we're gonna, we're gonna be over 2,000 2, euros. Raised for I cancer mean, research. We have we have a big goal today with uh, ten thousand euros. I mean, and uh, if we're correct, Cliff Bar is adding two and a half thousand to this. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, we're actually coming close to five thousand. Yeah, and um, I don't want to say too much, but 
Um, there are like one or two chances um, that um, the amount of donation increase increases a little more. But uh, yeah, let's wait a few minutes. Yeah, still. And it always looks like the foot is coming too late. Yeah, yeah, she's staying on her on the right foot. Always when instead of just kick from the right foot, catch the crimp and land with the foot. Yeah, when there's like pressure on the right foot, yeah. uh, the heel already points to the right hand side and that tells a lot about the whole body position. Yeah. But it's easy to say for us sitting comfortably in our chairs, uh, oh, Melissa is staying too long with the right foot. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's it. The last climbers and the last boulder. We um, we really hope that you um, you enjoyed this as a as a show as a display of climbing skills and yeah. Yeah, let, let's let's see. Time. Like um, now, we I think it's the time uh, to solve the last things out. I mean, we had some small problems uh, with the correct amount of points. So um, yeah, technical issues. But um, I think they if have we are been correct, uh, more or less fixed up. And the women's side, it uh, looks pretty correct. Then it was Alma Bestvater and Jesse Pils, uh both on the first place, actually. <laughs> and Yenya Katzbekova yeah, yeah. taking the last place on the podium. All climbers, everyone is happy. A really, really friendly atmosphere here. I, I, I still, like, I've been climbing for quite some time. I still find it unbelievable how friendly this community is. Like, they are professional athletes fighting for prizes and fighting in, a, in the most sport way and who's the best. And yet, after the comp, they just all sit down and talk and, you know, they just hang out like, like, just most normal people. Yeah, and also in the practice session, everyone was giving the others uh, yes, small they, advices. Yes, yeah, incredibly supportive for for, comp for for people that are competing against each other. I mean, it depends. There, there are uh, there are guys out there who aren't as um, happy to share the betas. Um, but I think in this case everyone was um, pretty pretty good. Um, and the yeah the athletes they looked pretty stoked at the end of it all right. I mean they they're smiling and, and, and everything. They don't seem to grim. They're not like. Oh, no, yeah. Tough. yeah, I mean. So, wo ist die Alma? Ja, pass auf. Also, während hier noch die Schiedsrichter sich überlegen, wie es mit dem Ranking der Damen aussieht, weil wir haben zwei genau identisch platzierte Damen und wir haben ja kein Countback wie im Weltcup, wo wir die Vorrunde hernehmen können. So, dann Now schnappen wir uns doch mal eine Athletin hier the discussion und about the für mein kleines two first Interview, places. Melissa. Melissa. Also Melissa, sprichst Deutsch. Wie fandst du das Format heute von dem Wettkampf? Super. Okay, wie war es für dich? Workout, zwei Stunden. Hattest du das schon mal bei einem anderen Wettkampf? Ein Wettkampf im Workout-Format oder war das dein erster? Was ist your first uh, competition with Workout? Uh, my last competition? No, sorry. I, I Was this your first competition in the Workout-Format? No, actually, I, well, my first competition with this format was uh, La Sportiva Legend 2011. Do you like this 
this competition format more or the regular um, format in the World Cups with on-site? I do like this format a lot normally, but well, like I don't practice so much ninja moves so much lately as I climb a lot outside. So for me, it's anyway like hard. But uh, I think it's super interesting like to visuali visualize yourself through the border. And you, yeah, you're able to like push way more uh, in this format. And I like it. And it's good for the show because uh, you can improve also like uh, your own better just by the visualization. Okay, also sie mag das Format mehr fast als das normale, weil es eine ganz anderes äh, Fähigkeitsspektrum nochmal abfragt, ähnlich wie am Felskletter. Man kann länger an den Bouldern arbeiten, kann auch Sachen zeigen, die man vielleicht in den äh, normalen äh, Flash-Boulder oder On-Site-Boulder nicht zeigen kann. Ich denke, es war auf jeden Fall eine gute Show. Wir haben starke Athleten gesehen und eine hoffentlich... Äh, wo ist die Siegerin gleich? Eine Alma noch im Siegerinterview. Vielen Dank, Melissa. Wir werden uns gleich noch sehen zum, zur Siegerehrung. Melissa Neve, vielen Dank. Und wir gucken mal, ob wir die Siegerin finden. Also das Format kam gut an. Jetzt versuchen wir noch mal hier eine weitere Stimme zu bekommen, ein O-Ton. Hat mal kurz. So, Matthias. Alles schon weg, das gibt's noch nicht. Aber gleich, dann warten wir, bis die Siegerehrung losgeht. It also, tries to make ich the denke, wir haben eine super Performance gesehen hier bei den Masters of Stone. Es war ein würdiger, ein echter Masters-Wettkampf, würde ich sagen, mit ein paar echt krassen Leistungen. Reini? Ich habe kein Mikro mehr. Ich glaube, weil das äh, jetzt nur noch das Mikro ist, was über den Livestream übertragen wird, weil wir gleichzeitig auch im Livestream jetzt zu hören sind. Und deswegen machen wir direkt weiter mit der Siegerehrung. Genau, also sind wir da schon soweit, haben wir das amtliche Endergebnis von den Schiedsrichtern, wie wir das da mit den beiden gleichplatzierten Damen machen wollen. Weißt du da was? Auch nicht, oder? Also hier haben wir schon mal alles aufgebaut und ich hätte gerne noch einen O-Ton von einem der Sieger. Da müssen wir noch einen Moment warten. Aber wie gesagt, ihr könnt noch spenden für Climbers Against Cancer. Die Veranstaltung heute, jeder Euro, der eingeht, wird gespendet. Willst du noch was loswerden? Na, ich wollte fragen, ob wir gerade das aktuelle Zwischenergebnis äh, bekannt gegeben haben. Hast du es? Spenden oder Ergebnis? Spenden. Ja, da ist die Dame mit dem Tablet, die hat das irgendwo. Ähm, müssen wir gucken. Genau, wir waren bei 4.500. Ich denke, wir knacken auf jeden Fall noch die 5.000 Euro Marke. Und ihr könnt auch heute Nacht, morgen früh und nächste Woche noch spenden. Also der Spendenkanal bleibt noch ein bisschen offen. Genau. So, we are back here. Um, we had uh, Matthias um, trying to uh, to find uh, the winners by the women, Jesse and Alma. Uh, maybe we get a small interview with them. That would be nice. Now they they call out all the routes. Mention the setters. Yeah. Yeah. Did. Um Root setters nearly outnumber the competitors, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 yeah. it's really often. Um, I mean, it's such a important uh, part in the competition and so much responsibility. So, at the very end, you can give them some uh, some fame. Oh yeah, for sure, they deserve all the credit. I mean, it's a risky I mean, game here. Yeah. <laughs> you could ha you could have this done on a moon board. But I don't think it would be that much fun. <laughs> no, I mean, it's living of that, that everything is new, that it's different. Well, but one thing that hasn't been really done yet is um, partner boulder on a moon board. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, things so, like, the world the doesn't need. The world is not ready for that nah. yet. Well, certainly I'm not. <laughs> God, that would be horrible. I mean, I'm not a big fan of partner boulders anyway, but doing that on the moon board. <laughs> yeah, they mentioned the DJ. So we have uh, another Ramirez at the turn turntables. Is that Rob Ramirez? He's yes. playing the sampling the tunes tonight. All right. Rob and Bob today. Rob and Bob. Yeah, it's a huge gathering. I mean, all the all of these halls and walls uh, trade show is a big opportunity for all the people that 
um, really exist in this business. I mean, so many people come here from for this event. Gym owners <coughs> to route setters to coaches to professional athletes to people in the clothing industry. Um, it's it's a really big get together chance for all of us here. Um, it's one of a kind. It's only one event a year that has the. Now, which is so specialized here in this case. Um, so, are the are the climbers finished? Well, we have Riney here, Riney who is doing the live commentary on the mic the whole time. Should we ask Riney how his uh, voice is? I think he's leaving the room. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit busy and leaving the room. Yeah. Bye, Riney. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I think it's worth saying that sitting comfortably, staring at the screen with a head of headphones, uh, set of headphones on your on your head, and commentating is a fairly easy job in comparison to being the guy on the mic uh, in the crowd, and where you really have to like ignite the people, right? That's a different job. Huh? I don't think I could ever grab a mic and just be be like an MC for two hours, like. Very different cup of tea. You will definitely l lose your voice. Yeah. I do it once or twice a year. You do it, really? Yeah, for sure. I mean, your, we your have, um, yeah, the, for example, the Get High uh, competition in Berlin. So, no, it's like, uh, but it's a, it's a cool job, you know, it's like you're, you're working with the audience. Okay, so to me, it looks like all of the results were fixed up now. Oh. It's a cool holy. I mean, uh, uh, among, went among women, away. it was. So, a bit between you hin and her, entschieden. Have you selber eine Ahnung, wonach man's entscheiden könnte, Jesse? Yeah. Weißt du, wonach das jetzt entschieden wird, wer eins und zwei wird? Na, no, okay. Na, dann seid ihr genauso planlos wie wir, wie wir auch. Einfach nicht entscheiden, das wird uns auch gefallen. Ähm, leider, glaube ich, liegt das auch ein bisschen an den Preisen und an den Urkunden und dass das alles auch so wie vorgesehen abgeht. Ansonsten, wie sieht eure Saison jetzt aus? Die Saison ist eigentlich durch. Was macht ihr gerade aktuell? Was sind so eure Beschäftigung? Ich probiere gerade vier Wochen Uni nachzuholen, die ich verpasst habe und das ist eigentlich meine Hauptbeschäftigung gerade. Also weniger Fokus aufs Bouldern, mehr auf Uni. Jessica, was machst du gerade? Ja, bei mir ist jetzt Trainingszeit, also ich konzentriere mich auf die Schwächen, das heißt Speed vor allem und fahre heute viel in die Hallen um. Okay, also ich habe uns auch mit Alex mal kurz gesprochen, wie schwer das für, eine Boulder, für einen Boulderer ist, einfach mal Pause zu machen. Kannst du gut Pause machen, Alma? Ja, so eine Woche funktioniert ganz gut, dann wird es schwierig. Bei dir, Jessica, gern, machst du gern mal Pause oder schwierig? Na, nicht... nicht nicht gern lang, aber ich habe die Pause Gott sei Dank schon hinter mir. <lacht> das ist ganz wichtig, also für alle, die so ein bisschen ambitionierter in den Leistungssport einsteigen, zwischendurch auch mal die Griffe wieder loszulassen. Was ist der nächste Competition, die nächste, der nächste Wettbewerb, den ihr äh, bestreiten werdet? Nächstes Jahr? Ja. N nächstes Jahr die EM Combined, denke ich. Jessica, du? Ich bin Ende Jänner in Mailand bei der Climbing Expo dabei. Climbing Expo in Mailand ist der nächste Termin für Jessica. So, dann würde ich sagen, entlasse ich euch wieder ein bisschen. Wir warten immer noch auf die Entscheidung von unseren Schiedsrichtern oben. Ihr müsst es jetzt geduldig hinnehmen, bis es hier gleich eine Entscheidung gibt. Vielen Dank. Ja, dann äh, nutzen wir die Zeit und bedanken uns auch nochmal bei dem größten Sponsor dieser Veranstaltung, nämlich bei der Firma Cliff Bar die 2500 Euro in den Topf getan hat, in den Spendentopf und äh, das ist auch noch mal so. Yeah, we had um, our interviews in German because it's a German competition. I mean, we try to bring the uh, live stream in English, so uh, maybe we can reach more European people with that and um, this competition is growing. Oh, crazy, look at that. Scarpa is adding 2,300 euros. Out. Yeah, they went full on. But also E9, what is that? 
that is crazy. I mean, now uh, we are definitely in the range. Look, uh, all the, the, the viewers from the live stream, um, they achieved more than 2,000 euros as well. So, where... Um, are you counting? <laughs> I, was, I was kind of trying to, yeah. So Scarpa, Nepro Sport and the Cliff Bar together is 5,000, 6,080 with uh, E9, 700 and, uh, 7,100 with Prana, and 9,100 all together. So... Guys, it seems like we're 900 euros short of the... But Our look at that now. Goal. Now we have the official result. I don't Let's take a seat. Now take it. Congratulations. And the third place. Ach so, vielleicht in Deutsch. Der dritte Platz geht mit 300 Euro nach Hause. Die Zeremonie, die Flower Zeremonie, die Siegerehrung übernehmen die zwei Chefs hier vom E4, Dirk Ulich. Und der Otti, ein Riesenapplaus auch für die beiden Initiatoren dieser Veranstaltung. Ach, das ist der, das ist der Pokal. Alter, das ist der Pokal. Wer es nicht weiß, das ist eine VHS-Videokassette. Der dritte, zweite Platz geht an unsere Österreicherin im Bilde, Jessica Pilz. Ach, es gibt... Ah, dann bitten... Schaut mal, ich habe es jetzt erst verstanden. Das zeigt an, dass Jessica nicht... Geh mal da hoch, dass du nicht Zweite geworden bist, sondern Erste. Es gibt nämlich 1.000 Euro für die Erste. Deswegen bitten wir die Zweite Erstplatzierte. Wir haben uns also für das salomonische Urteil entschieden. Und ich bedanke mich bei den Schiedsrichtern für diese Entscheidung. Denn ebenfalls auf Platz 1 ist unsere Weimarerin Alma Bestvater. Wuhu! So können Wettkämpfe dann immer ausgehen. Eben nicht, dass wir nach den Versuchen geschaut haben. Ein einziger Versuch hätte das vielleicht auseinander dividieren können. Wir sind dankbar, dass wir zwei erste Plätze haben. Masters of Stone Siegerinnen 2019. Alma Bestvater und Jessica Pilz. So, vielen Dank, ihr drei. Und da mag ich mit den Männern weiter. Und das ist geil hier. Ist da wirklich auch Masters of Stone, der Film, drauf? Oh Mann, ey. Wollte ich gerade sagen, wer hat heute noch so ein Abspielgerät für so einen VHS-Film? Aber geile Idee auf jeden Fall. So, also. Dann machen wir weiter mit den Männern. Wir holen Platz Nummer drei hier nach vorne mit einer super Vorstellung am letzten Boulder hat er sich noch auf den dritten Platz geklärt. Ein Riesenapplaus für den Mann aus Italien, für Gabri Moroni. So, und auch er kriegt Blümchen hier und eine Videokassette. So, und wir machen mit Platz 2 weiter. Ein Riesenapplaus für unseren Mann aus Japan, der hier auf Platz 2 geklettert ist. Tsukuru Hori. Er kriegt hier den Scheckblümchen und eine Umarmung von den Jungs hier von der E4 Boulder Halle. Starke Vorstellung und die Videokassette, da guckt er ungläubig, was ist das? What the hell is this? Der ist zu jung für VHS, zu jung. Ich kenne noch Beta, Beta-Video, Tonbänder. So, ja, also. Und der Sieger, der Alte und der Neue, Rockmaster, E4-Legend-Gewinner, 
Ein Riesenapplaus für den Sieger, Alex Kasanov! So, da sind sie, geht nochmal zusammen. Picture, yes. The winners, 2019 Masters of Stone Contest. Das sind die Sieger. Wo sind die Mädels? Die brauchen wir nochmal. Die Mädels, bitte alle nochmal nach vorne. So, wir bitten nochmal alle zu uns. Jenja Kaspekova. Auch unsere Damen bitten wir nochmal hier an die äh, Wand oder beziehungsweise auf das Podium. Gabriele, and um, I want to give the microphone to you. Uh, first of all, to the women, maybe you want to uh, say something. Um, da das hier ja ein Charity-Event ist, haben wir uns gemeinsam entschlossen, um, unsere Preisgelder auch zu spenden. Yeah, actually, I'm extremely honored to be a part of this group of people that I was looking. Um, you know, they were my heroes when I was growing up, and competing with them was great. And I'm happy to that this money goes to a good cause to fight cancer, and I donate this money to Climbing Again Cancer. And yeah, it's I don't know. <laughs> I'm joining these guys and I'm donating this money to Climbers Against Cancer. That's a honor for me. Ja, das gleiche gilt für mich. Wir werden von Sponsoren und so weiter gut unterstützt und von dem her spende ich auch mein Preisgeld an Climbers Against Cancer. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have. Uh, I'm very fun. Thank you. Thanks uh, E4 and Marcel Stones for inviting me. It has been an amazing event for a good cause, and uh, I hope we're gonna repeat it next year because it's been one of the best events of the year. Thank you. Yeah, and we're gonna, all the, the podium athletes are gonna donate the money for CAC. So I think it's a good thing to do. And again, thank you very much. Also, das gesamte Preisgeld spenden unsere Sieger an Climbers Against Cancer. Das sind the real masters of stone. Riesen Applaus für die drei Podien, Damen und drei Herren. Und damit kriegen wir den Top voll, würde ich sagen. Alle nochmal aufs Podium. Kommt nochmal in die Mitte. Das ist, das habt ihr verdient. Was ist das zusammen? We are back. Yeah, that was, um, I mean, we heard those rumors. Um, and um, that was a, like amazing jest, I would say. All the athletes uh, decided to donate their winnings today. All of them, that's crazy. Uh, alone with that uh, and um, the sponsors, I think we reached the 10 grand as well. Oh, we have gone far beyond 10 grand. With all the money from the athletes, it's well above 10. Yeah. yeah and so there are actually, I mean, it's a good. Well, they actually could have made all of them. I mean, it's a big success here. They could have made all of them be in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Award every single one of them. Like, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it was a sporting event at the end of the day. 
So, but we are at the end now. So um, I hope it was fun for you uh, to watch. Like for us, it was a, a great experience. We're not doing that so often. No, we're totally amateurs. <laughs> uh, we tried our best today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the competition is great, and we hope it takes place next year again. Huh? Seems so, like it, man. Uh, so thanks bye -bye. a bunch for being my mate tonight. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> nice one, Fabi. So, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.